Ladies and gentlemen, thrilled to have you here for another epic debate as we have two major heavyweights in the YouTube political debate world with us today. Heavy hitters, folks. This is going to be a lot of fun. So if this is your first time here, by the way, consider hitting that subscribe button as we've got a lot more debates coming up that we are very excited about, including you'll see on the bottom right of your screen this March in person, we're going to have Destiny and Vosh crossing swords. That's going to be a big one, likely in Los Angeles, going to be a lot of fun, and that will be streamed here at Modern Day Debate. With that... Want to let you know, folks, our guests here today have their links in the description. So if you're listening and you're like, hmm, I like that, good news, their links are conveniently located just below, just down there, see? And this is going to be a great one, folks. If you have any questions, just shoot them into the live chat. And if you can tag me with at Modern Day Debate, it'll help me see each question. Super Chats will go to the top of the list for the Q&A and also give you a chance to make a comment toward one of the speakers. However, they, of course, would get the chance to respond, and I would love to ask you, please, if you could keep it as kind as possible to our debaters, definitely challenge your ideas, but if you can, if you have those personal attacks that uh, you got a, a round in the chamber ready to fire, you know, fire it at me, I, I don't mind, but we do want to honor our guests as we appreciate them being on Modern Day Debate today. So, with that, this is just civil discourse, folks, no time sections, just Low stakes, easygoing convo. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's going to be a good one, folks. So with that, I do want to open this up to everybody. So thanks so much. Oh, goodness gracious. I just realized the names. Thanks so much. The live chat let me know that the names are flopped on the, uh, on the watch page. So thanks. I'm switching it over right now. Good eye, everybody. And with that, very embarrassing. Okay. With that, gentlemen, thanks so much again for being here. And I have got it swapped, so we are all set and ready. The floor is all yours, gentlemen, if there's a particular issue either of you especially wanted to bring up. Um, yeah, I feel like it's just my personal opinion. If we're going to be discussing any broad standing economic or social issues, introducing socialism and capitalism seem like a good way to get started with that, don't you think? I'm totally deferring to you guys. So I'm Carl? happy with it. Carl, if you're good oh, with sorry, it. Sorry, I didn't realize you were asking me. Um, so you say again. <clears throat> oh, yes. Do you mind at all beginning with socialism and capitalism? No, it's fine. All right. Um, uh, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to take the first, um, uh, the first opening. Um, so with regards to uh, socialism. Yeah, I haven't got speech prepared oh. or anything. I just need to talk. I'm terribly sorry? I didn't. I didn't prepare a uh, sort of an intro speech. I figured. Oh no, I, I didn't either. It's it's all off the yeah, cuff. That's that's fine. Good. Nice and casual. So, with regards to socialism, people, a lot of images get conjured in people's minds when we discuss socialism. When I think of socialism, I think of simple, elegant market socialism, a simple solution to democratize the workplace uh, in our country. Of course, I'm from America. That's what I usually talk about. But any country, I think, could be. Um, a fair beneficiary of this policy. And the reason for that is... Sorry, we... it's, it's uh -huh. all breaking up online. Yeah, I, I think I your connection might be a bit... That's being... I think you might be connection a little bit uh, uh, robot -y at the moment. Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, I think it's my connection too. Yeah, I'm just closing down browser windows just in case that... Right. Gotcha. I've I've got it all open. Maybe it's having some kind of effect on it, so I'm just going to close everything down. Do you want to yeah, take a moment sorry. to reset yeah, your router? When I think of socialism, no, no, no. It's, it's not that. Well, it might be that actually. <laughs> One thing that sometimes I, a bunch of stuff. I defer to your suggestions, James. If we sometimes, what happens is. If we have to, it's okay to turn off the video and that might kind of help it catch up. And mm -hmm. as long as people are all here to hear the ideas, I think even though we don't get to see your face, getting to hear those yeah, ideas no, it's, okay. it, I think it'll be fine. I think it's because I have, um, well, literally thousands of tabs open. Because uh, <laughs> you know how it is where you just, you got, cause I'll, I'll drag a tab into a fresh window and then open tabs in that and I, you know, it gets messy. Yeah. Sorry, Vod, can you, can you, what, I heard um, what, what I think of as socialism. And so if you could pick it up from there. So of course, of course. 
Um, so hopefully that works. If not, we can limit bandwidth, yeah, by cutting video. But whatever the case may be, when I think about hmm. socialism, uh, a bunch of things get conjured in people's heads. Uh, Vuvuzela, Stalin, Mao Zedong, you know, Ho Chi Minh. What I'm talking about, very simply, is the democratization of the workplace, the um, the 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 uh, uh, publicization or the 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 deprivatization of firms. Essentially, if you work at a place you have collective ownership of that place. Um, this is essentially a worker co-op. This isn't some, you know, vast theoretical um, economic well, okay. implementation. So, well, let, let me ask a question there then. Of course. Um, why, why should anyone agree to that? Uh, well, it would be in the best interest of the vast majority of the people in this country because it would lead to well, a who... change in the power hierarchy between workers and owners. Well, I disagree, because as we saw last time, half of the businesses in your country are small businesses. What does that have to do with anything? Well, that means that they're just small guys like me who can employ a few guys as well, a few people as well. And what you're saying is it's actually as soon as I employ anyone, they are a part owner of what I'm doing, which means I'm not going to be inclined to employ anyone. For one... The fact that there are a certain number of small businesses in the country has nothing to do with the statistic of how many workers work for small businesses. It may well be that 50% of the businesses in this country are small, but 90% of the workers in this country work for larger businesses. Larger businesses will, of course, have more employees. Even so, small I, businesses I are still- I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true at all. Sure, well, but even if, that was true, even if that was true, it doesn't matter, does it? Because the point is, it's not just for someone to flee because they are given a job, they, vo they voluntarily take a job to and take ownership of something they don't have ownership and they're not entitled to. So your original point was that the prevalence of small businesses was in any way relevant to this. Apparently, 60 million Americans work for small businesses, which is approximately 25% of the workforce, 30% of the workforce. Um, Again, though, whether or not... How big uh, do you think the American workforce is? Oh, well, we can check. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should. 157 million. Okay, so, so that would be... Of them. Yeah, so about 35% then work for small yeah. businesses. And That's a small a business is defined as... Let me see. Uh, less than 500, was it? Less than 500 workers. Yeah. Okay. I don't know about you, but I think a firm with 500 workers is one in which there is a significant disparity between the number of owners and workers at that given uh, firm. Every firm has a significant disparity between owners and workers. Also. I agree, which is why worker co-ops are in the best interest. I, I agree. The number of small businesses out there is completely irrelevant to my point. No, it's the number of workers that each business employs is actually irrelevant to your point. The only businesses that could conceivably have a case against worker co-ops would be ones with two or three people working there. And I agree with you. Those businesses, for bureaucratic reasons, probably don't need to be made worker co-ops. But the vast majority of Americans do not work for places that only employ two or three people. The vast That's majority okay. of Americans work for That's large okay. firms where they don't know the owner of the establishment. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That's okay. All right, that's I'm glad not, we agree. That's not a state of affairs so, that needs rectifying by socialism. Okay, so the initial point you brought up about small businesses was completely irrelevant then to worker co-ops. It was a complete pivot. It had nothing to do then. No, it with means the you're going to kill a third. At the kill? very least, you'll kill a third of your businesses because what? I'm not hiring some if they, if they are entitled to a part ownership of what of my business. That's why I don't I'm know. Well, I don't know what we're talking about killing. Uh, 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 I, I'm not. Do you know what a worker co-op is? A third of the jobs in the United States. Wait, yes. wait, 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 wait. So a firm with 500 people would be killed if it was made <clears throat> law that businesses be cooperatively owned. You do realize yeah, you no wouldn't be making hire. the hiring decisions if you own such a firm in a worker co-op, right? That would be democratically decided by the workers. Do you know how worker co-ops work? Yes, but if if I if I owned a business and a bunch of people were suddenly going to be uh, one day my employees and the next day my co-bosses of the business, I might have different opinions on these. Who cares things. what your opinions are? Everyone's opinions well, don't matter. A it's small, a democracy. Yes, I know, but what I'm saying is my opinion will generally reflect the trend among small business owners because they have the same interests. Right, yes, owners. But most people work. They do not own. 
and I'm interested in improving the well-being of most people in this country. Most people at in this country, at different times in their lives, they do different things. Most people in this country do not own businesses of 500 workers or more, and they never will under your plan. Uh, yes, good. Much in the same way that I am not particularly fond of slave owning as a trade, nor lords okay. and serfs. I think that moving towards an economic system, which doesn't have the vast majority of people made subservient to the business interests right. of an incredibly small minority, is a great way to move forward. I'm populist like that. So, I want to improve so the lives of most people. Voluntarily exchanging your labor for money in exchange uh, for, for whatever labor you, you're being asked to do justifies stealing the businesses of half the, the business. people who earn them. Do you think taxes yeah. are theft, Carl? No. Okay. Then you agree that the government you has the right. You, you are appropriating their property because of your yeah, taxes. a priori. Yeah, you're appropriating their property with taxes. Do you think taxes are theft? Do you, do you not understand that you're not asking for taxes, you're asking for shares? Do you think there is a fundamental difference? No, don't answer my, don't ask my question. Uh, don't ask the question. Answer that question. Do you understand that redistributing the ownership of a business to other people, whether they work there or not, is not just so it's not theft to take millions of dollars from an, enti an entity or a firm but it is theft then when did to I say that? reassign what wait because you don't believe taxes are theft do you why, believe why taxes are you are even theft? asking questions why can't you just answer my what question? are you i'm asking so wait wait yes or no do you believe taxes are theft? i'm the one asking the question you you can't you earlier it, said no so i'm going to assume no, that's no, what you I mean no i do not believe taxation is theft wonderful i'm so glad we agree on that carl i agree okay i uh, think I, that to the, to the host look man i'm not i'm not interested in debating with backing this. out already i'm just asking you for a he's simple already comparison. being disingenuous this by asking you if you believe tax or theft carl i think you know exactly think, where this goes it's Carl, Carl listen, already? You're not understanding what Hold I'm on. saying. You are not listening and engaging with what I'm saying. Carl. It is immoral to take... Right, see you later. Oh, hold on one sec. I think we can try to try to mend it. Like, I can how, play how more about we do this? Right. How, how about we do this? If I'm explaining something, can we mute Vorsch? I, I just guys, asked if you believe taxes are theft. Guys, right? Vorsch, I started guys, talking and then you started interrupting me. Like but you, you don't believe last... taxes are theft. I'm not sec, wasting my time Bosh. with you, Vorsch. I've got a video to edit. Okay. If we I can... wouldn't mind getting an early night. Dude, it's it's okay. So if this was too much you for you, we can reassign Vorsch to another or, day. And we can Bosh. have a conversation, but if not, I'm not having a repeat of last time, Vorsch. Do you understand? If we can, I promise, I think we can, we can make it work. And I know that you guys are very passionate. And so if we just, if we're willing to take just a moment and I promise, oh gosh, am I muted? I am. No, 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 you sound fine. We can take a second to calm we down. What we'll, what we'll do is let's just take a moment. I promise Vash, we'll come right back to you. But if you're, if we uh, just have this question come out from Carl and then Vash, I promise we'll come right back to you and just kind of, uh, I'll be strict about kind of moving in to be sure that no one stops uh, anybody before they're done. In fact, if you guys are willing, we could even try this. Once in a while we do this is if you're willing to, if we wait for each other to say done with that point. Mm. Oh yeah, sure. No, I, I love civil debate. I love giving everyone a chance to speak their minds. Carl, please take all the time in the world. <laughs> I will, Vosh. Um, thankfully, I don't need very much time. Basically, just because you work somewhere doesn't give you an entitlement to be a path owner of the thing. Uh, it's someone else's labor that got the, got the business into the condition that it was when they were ready to be able to hire you. You voluntarily accepted the job. You've got no entitlement here. You're just a grasping, greedy socialist who, frankly, I think is afraid of the fact that some parts of life require hardship. And that's just it. Okay. Done. Thanks so much. And then go ahead, Vash. We'll give you a chance to defend. So I will ignore the baseless ad hominem there. I don't know why Carl felt fit to include that, but uh, I'm a utilitarian. I like instituting social <laughs> change that will right. benefit people and make life better for most people. Sometimes passing laws is a part of that. There have been many points in the glorious tradition of Western political theory that we have sometimes even violently, instituted massive paradigm shifts in how we operate our government. The transition away from monarchy, for example, was not a peaceful one. I'm not advocating for violence. I'm only saying that far more severe things have been done than a law being passed to make cooperative ownership, uh, you know, um, 
sort of uh, uh, mandated in firms of a certain size in this country than what I'm advocating for here. Um, to be perfectly specific, um, Carl, you're, ju you're just, oh, you voluntarily chose to work here. Oh, such and such. This could be used to defend indentured slavery or indentured servitude. My apologies. This could be used to defend... God, child, uh, um, uh, child labor in, in coal mines. You could use this to defend all sorts of miserable things. I don't see fit to consign the majority of Americans, or whatever country we're talking about, to a miserable, wretched, poverty-laced existence just because the prior laws made it such that it was legal for them to be put in that situation, or they will starve. Because, of course, that's always the bludgeon we're hit with. You know, if you don't work, you live a miserable subsistence existence. I want to make life better. Worker co-ops seem to make life better for most Americans. Right. Thanks so much, Vash. Mm -hmm. We'll kick it back to Carl. If worker co-ops made life better for most Americans, why aren't they the, they the overwhelming business model? Um, I don't agree that the, the, I mean, you can't just say the transition away from monarchy. Europe is still ruled by monarchs. And all of the revolutions of the 20th century were horrific bloodbaths that failed. So I don't think that citing them as, oh, we can do this because they did it. I actually think that's a warning away from doing that. Um, passing a law to have cooperative ownership of businesses, that will have significant effect from the 48% of businesses in the country that are owned by people who don't actually want to have their property stolen from them. Um, indentured servitude, child labor, et cetera, et cetera, are not voluntary, they are coercive. I can't oh. believe you didn't know that, but that's fine. Um, and there will always be people who are less well off than others because that is the de default state of freedom. However, that doesn't have to be the only state. There are ways that people can get their way out of it. And there are even things that we can do to incentivize and help people be able to pull themselves out of poverty. But if there's one thing I've learned in my life that is you cannot give people prosperity. And so taking from some and hypothetically giving to others is simply going to end up with, honestly, I think it's just going to end up as a repeat, as socialism always does. It's the same old cycle. Done. Thanks so much. Yeah, that was actually really impressive. Um, I actually, there were so many stupid points that were made there, I actually had to write them down. Because after the first two, I thought like, okay, I have the answers to these. And then I had to, okay, so first of all, um, so I like Carl's suggestion that there isn't an inherently coercive element to the need to work in our society. You suggest that child labor was coercive. I don't see how. They didn't have to work. They were prompted into working due to the uh, financial need of the family. That's why people work today. The coercion element is equally present in both of those cases, but we agreed nonetheless that somebody should, you know, maybe step in and prevent children from being able to work uh, because it makes society better. You pointed out, just a quick, am I uh, muted? Carl's cam froze for me. I didn't know if that was the system being muted. No, I think Carl just... Uh... Closed off his cam just okay, to that's fair. Yeah, let us save connection. Uh, secondly, Carl asks, why isn't socialism already done if it's the best system? Well, the most ethical and effective system doesn't just magically come into place. Capitalism is better right now than um, uh, uh, monarchal, uh, um, uh, uh, mercantile capitalism was, and it's better than the systems that existed before then. But capitalism didn't just magically appear at the beginning of human existence. You know, we had to work for that. Just because a system is good doesn't mean it already exists. If that was the case, under Sargon's logic, then feminism wouldn't exist because he believes that feminism detracts from the sort of uh, best state of society. He doesn't feel it's necessary. If he doesn't feel it's necessary, why does it exist? Well, obviously, because things are a little more complicated than that. And I'll leave it off on one point, which is... Uh, Sargon said uh, freedom means inequality. If you have freedom, uh, you will invariably have inequality. And uh, there will always be inequality, of course, of many types. There's no denying that. However, I think it's important to point out that this is an incredibly uh, disingenuous and blasé way to hand wave the suffering of millions. Uh, and billions, maybe? You can't just excuse people's suffering because you know suffering will always exist. You always have to try to make the world a better place. And bet. that's my... Thanks so much. Of course. I think Carl's still with us. I'm a little uh -oh. afraid. Carl, are you still with us? Did he disconnect? I, 
his name does still show. Maybe his so, caption. Yeah, on his sorry, oh, I'm, I'm here. Well, that's all right. No problem. So, uh, my look, my son's been playing up all evening, and he's just my, my wife just knocked on the door. So. Oh, that's all right. I'll be back in five. You back? okay, James? I, wait, I think he'll be right back. So he, he said he'll be back in five to ten. Can I can I say something to you? You bet. I think your haircut looks fantastic today. Did you get it done Appreciate recently? That. No, it means a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I uh, recently, you know, I used to spike it, but now I'm kind of like trying to do the comb over. It's a more distinguished look. I've finally just given in to the fact that I'm 33. I think yeah. you're looking down. I'll be, uh, I'll be lucky. Listen, I know people say I look 35. I'm 25. If I look as good as you when I'm 33, okay, I'm going to be counting my lucky stars. Let me tell you. That's nice. That's the nicest thing I've ever heard. I always hear that I look old for my age, which is hard. It's kind of like, well, it's like distinguished. But at the same time, I don't want to look old. I think you look we'll serious for your age. I don't think you look old for your age. You're a PhD, uh, PhD candidate, aren't you? I'm working, uh, not a candidate yet, but I am working on, so like, I'm working on the master's, which is in route for the PhD. So it's like, I'll be a candidate pretty soon. What's your, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to like butter you up or anything. I'm just curious. What's your, um, what's, what's your major? Industrial organizational psychology. So oh. basically like work psychology. So like what types of selection tests do we use? So like, for example, like if employers like Amazon or other usually bigger companies will use selection tests. So they might kind of screen out applicants looking for people who are high in conscientiousness or intelligence tests. If it's like knowledge work. Oh, that actually sounds pretty rad. Uh, best of luck. I, 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 could, I don't think I could do a master's. I'm so bad at school. That's nice of you. It's hard to believe you're you're a thinker. So I, I think you'd probably I think the trick is enjoying what you do. And I, I definitely yeah, enjoy yeah. it, even though it's, uh, you know, like sometimes it's grueling, but it's it's fun. And yeah, it's kind of like when you enjoy ideas. But yeah, I know that you had gotten a, I think I remember you had mentioned that you had gotten a bachelor's and I'm trying to remember, was it in sociology? Nailed it. Remember? Yeah. With a minor in communications. Awesome. Excellent. That's really cool. I can't, Was it do, out? I can't do homework for the life of me. I can't do it. I, it's all test grades. I, I am I am horrible at school. Um, you know? I don't blame you. It is There are like certain things that are... Some people enjoy them more than others, and I don't blame them. Like, it's, uh, it's not like a one-size-fits-all, which I guess is just like a lot of things outside of school, too. So Yeah, definitely. Um, I guess... Um, and, and, and one of the things I think that makes school maybe a little bit harder to get invested in these days is sometimes it feels like there's such a disconnect between what you learn and its applicability. And it, and it yeah. feels like it's its own little bubble where you just get like the paper at the end and then, and then you're out of there and you're onto an entire new, completely disconnected, you know, oh, yeah. series of incidences. Oh yeah. That's so true. Uh, I would encourage people to... I think sometimes I hear like anti-college views, which I'm kind of like, well, wait, hold on. Like, um, there are probably some majors that I'm not sure if I would ever do, but that's also maybe part of my bias. But uh, there are some at the same time. It's like, sometimes I hear people say, they're like, oh, I'm not going to go to college. It's just too much debt. And it's like, well, but if you became a, an MD, like you'll pay it off really quick. <laughs> like you'll have plenty of money. But it's just that it's true that there are a lot of majors where it's like, it could be quite long before you pay off that debt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not just underwater basket weaving, too. It's just like, because they would yeah. say, like, become a lawyer. You know, lawyers pay well. Become an engineer. Engineers pay well. Become a coder. Coders pay well. But every time that happens, that industry gets flooded with new people. And the, the, the average wage at the, like, it's like plummets, uh, at least from the ground floor, you know? So they oh, have yeah. to keep finding the new, like, guaranteed work after college profession. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. It, it'll fluctuate. So it's... It's not an easy. It's not an easy game if you if you want to play it. But it's a uh, the trick is I suppose whatever you do, enjoy it, and that's my hope. I don't know, like who knows what'll happen. My hope is I I do love modern day debate so much. But like if it ever came to the place of being able to do it full time, I just enjoy it so much that I have to be honest. I would just wrap up the PhD and then. Uh, Go to YouTube, to be honest, but yeah, that's hey, that's you know. the that's the guaranteed work these days. The you the YouTube gig that's the that's the good stuff. Um, it's fun. 
it, it's, it, it uh, definitely is. The channel, I, I really enjoy it. I was seeing, a, let's see, I was talking to a counselor and I said, he was like, oh, even in a, like, it's like, I don't know. I like people who, you know, I like ideas. And at that time, it was like the start of modern day debate. Mm -hmm. So modern day debate has been a really fun idea community. It's like people who just love ideas. And so that's why it's kind of across the gambit, like religion, politics, science, and but it's so fun. It's a community that's just been really pleasant. Like it's um, their idea people, which is fun to, it's fun to be around them. Yeah. Sorry about ah. that chaps. I do apologize. No, not at all. Uh, what, what, what were we saying? Sorry. We, we, we can, I think we can take a step back probably. Um, if, if, if we were to, what was the last thing you were in on? Um, oh, I just made my point about, um, uh, the transition away from monarchy. Laws being passed for co-op ownership and how indentured servitude and child labor are coercive. Yeah, I guess I'll I'll, I'll go because I, I responded to those, but I'll go over it again because you right, know, obviously yeah, yeah. you were right. Um, so essentially, my issue with mm -hmm. these comparisons are as such: for one, um, I, I I strongly disagree with your assertion that revolutions have all been like a bloody waste of time. You know, I as a as a Yank, you know, I think I'm I'm quite happy personally to be living uh, away from the uh, you know the looming threat of um of of monarchical domination um there are benefits sometimes to massive systemic changes for example the implementation of the magna carta the the, the making of um, england into a parliamentary democracy was also a system which could have been challenged with the accusation don't you think it's uh, immoral to take away people's private properties at the end of the day we're talking about the livelihood of millions of people in this country, hundreds of millions. The majority of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Um, uh, some 40% of Americans cannot afford a $400 emergency. This is in the wealthiest country in the world. That's disgusting to me. Like that's that's repulsive, that's vile. And it doesn't need to be that way. It's This isn't like some inevitable product of, a, of an economic, you know, uh, de determinable condition. This is decisions that have been made by people in power. And we don't have any way to check that power because right now all the power in this country is concentrated amongst the uber wealthy and the politicians. And the two of them get along very, very, very well. The only way to meaningfully return this country to a direction of democracy and egalitarianism and representing the rights of the average person is taking that power away from them. And I would say to anyone who believes that immoral, the same thing I would say to anyone who believes the days of slave owners were immoral, or the, the the taking away the rights of the monarchs, or before them, the emperors and kings that, you know, ruled the, 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 the ancient realms of the world. And I would say this, sometimes it is actually quite moral to take power and property away from people who are using that power and property to oppress marginalize and reduce the vast majority of the population. And I stand by that very firmly. Thanks so much. Right. Um, the, the problem that you have with this, these comparisons, in my opinion, is that in the comparisons that you're making, all of the people who acquired the property privilege and wealth that they have acquired it through illegitimate means. The problem that you have in America and with billionaires is that you, I, I honestly can't point to a billionaire who got their money through illegitimate means. I, I don't know. I mean, like, who did Mark Zuckerberg oppress in order to become a billionaire? You know, the by the me, if the means to gain the thing were fair and voluntary, which they appear to have been in most part, then arbitrarily taking them away because you don't like the outcome, that's just going to be. There's no way to perceive it that's not that's unfair. So. I don't know what to say about that, really. It's just, I don't think people can agree to it. I don't agree to it. Um, is, the, the, oh. the, hang on, I'm not finished. Um, the revolutions in Europe were a bloody waste of time, and they were unbelievably bad. You can, you can crow about the American Revolution, but that's because it was an English revolution. Uh, it was essentially an English civil war. Um, so I'm not surprised it wasn't that bloody, to be honest. If you look at the original English civil war, that wasn't very bloody either, all things considered. Um, it doesn't discount the fact that all of the other revolutions have been terrible failures. Uh, it just it just shows the uniqueness of the English perspective, the individualist perspective. Uh, but part of the individualist perspective is, in fact, the whole thing is built on property rights. And if you if you take them away, if you if you ignore them, then they then you lose the structure and stability of that system, and you end up becoming like the continental that you are. 
you think like a German and you want an American, an English outcome, you aren't going to get it. Thanks so much, Carl. Okay, so I'm going to be perfectly honest. I have no idea what you were talking about. I don't. For a second, I was worried that I had like skipped a beat. Uh, I'm going to assume that was deliberately incoherent in an attempt to sort of jump me. The Why don't you just ask me what I meant? Prescient points. You can clarify if you'd like when you have your time. The more prescient points you made, uh, I don't know why we're getting on revolutions here because I'm talking about very legal lawmaking. Um, uh, uh, so I, I don't know how we sort of jumped uh, to that point. Uh, I don't know how the American Revolution could be fairly criticized as an English civil... I, again, I... But, but with all of that aside, your Can't central criticism here is, is, is completely bunk. You say that the power achieved by those in power today was achieved through legitimate means. That's the exact same thing feudal lords would have said. The exact same thing. Um, by their standards, the power they had achieved was legitimate. Do you think that people went around for a thousand years claiming your local law, like their, their power is illegitimate? Of course not. And, and they could have said the same thing. To participate in the bounty of this monarchy and then to complain about it just because you don't like that you're a serf and others are lords is, it's myopic, you know, it's selfish. It's a nonsensical argument. Carl, and you have to know that. I'm talking about making the world a better place. The property rights of the lords were violated uh, uh, pr pretty substantially, mind you, in many European countries when we transitioned towards a democratic society, you know, when we had the, the, the vast swaths of land they controlled being broken up and, and made municipal properties that were then uh, um, zoned off into commercial areas. That was their property being seized and it made the world a much, much better place. And it had nothing to do, by the way, with the serfs being mad at how things turned out. And had to do with the fact that the system was fundamentally unfair. As then, a very small number of people controlled all the political power and economic power in the country. We have today a system where a very small number of people control all the economic and political power. And it's interesting to me that in this discussion, which is ostensibly supposed to be about the benefits of worker co-ops or capitalism or whatever, you seem encamped with the very idea of fundamentally changing society, which is the most banal, uh, 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 boring, and, and spineless approach imaginable to discussing political theory. Uh, go ahead. Thanks, Flash. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, it's pretty bold of you, to be honest, to admit that you don't understand what I've just said and then claim that my argument is incoherent or nonsense when you've just admitted fault. Uh, the difference is in English, liberalism is individualistic and German socialism is collectivist. This means that the in, in English individualism, the individual is his own property and his property rights matter. Um, you are a German collectivist. So the individual is not their property. They are actually property of the group. Their property rights don't matter. If you can find a philosophical rationale to allow you to target a portion of the population to persecute them, which I would say, I would say violating people's right to property is a form of persecution, then you are in fact no different to the tyrants of the 20th century. You, the only difference between you and them is scale. Um, the idea, like the idea, you can't compare feudal lords to Mark Zuckerberg. Like Zuckerberg achieved his prosperity through consent; they achieved theirs through violence. We do not consider violence a legitimating factor, but we do consider consent a legitimating factor. If we don't agree on that, then that's fine. But I think you're wrong. Um, and medieval life was so much more complicated than serfs versus lords. I don't even want to start going down that rabbit hole. Uh, it'll be a massive distraction. But you just you do not know enough about fuel Europe, basically. That's a very compelling counter argument, Carl. I don't want to get into it, but you're wrong, Lowell. Um, so I don't know. This is I've seen oh, you try no, to you do this before. You can try get into the you, you believe sec, you sec. you believe that sort of nations have a character, and you try to fit people into those blocks. I don't know what you mean by German collectivism. I'm advocating for property rights. In fact, I'm advocating oh, for the expansion of property rights. Um, I don't know if you're actually engaging with any of the arguments that I'm making here, uh, because it seems like every time I respond to a series of points you make, you back up another level and make a different series of points. But that's okay. Um, if you want to concede sort of the idea that market socialism would improve society and your only contention is that passing laws to make private firms collectively owned by their workers seeds too close to some 
esoteric idea of German collectivism for your tastes, that's totally okay. What I care about is making society better. I advocate for the expansion of property rights so they apply to everyone who works at a given place. I don't like the fact that our society is controlled by a very small number of people. And I don't like people who justify the fact that society is controlled by a very small number of people by calling those who have lost in this game sore losers. I like democracy. I don't know how you feel about democracy. I like the idea that people should be able to advocate for their own rights. I consider these to be very fundamental principles of liberalism as well. Um, it is often said that socialism is a promise to fulfill the Enlightenment, whereas fascism is a rejection of Enlightenment principles, which is why socialists are themselves very concerned with fraternity, equality, uh, you know, brotherhood, uh, liberty, um, and fascists are of course not. They don't like those things very much. Um, I care very much about the principles of the Enlightenment. It's why I advocate for everything that I do, because I do want a democratic society that is fair, that gives everyone a voice, both in their government and in the place that they work. And if you have no empirical arguments against the validity of that form of organization and would instead rather back up to some suggestion that I'm violating the English principle of the organization and that actually this type of oligarchy is much better than the old type of oligarchy, then feel free to. That's your right. You'll you'll never encounter a civilization that doesn't have some kind of oligarchy. Uh, it's wishful thinking at its worst, in my opinion. Uh, the idea an expansion of property rights by violating other people's property rights. Uh, I, I I you could you could quite easily term theft that. There's no reason why that can't be applied to theft because that's precisely what you're doing. And the reason that you're doing it is because of my feels. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like that. Well, okay, that's fine. You don't have to like it. Um, it's okay if you don't understand the difference between individualism and collectivism, even though I've just explained it. It's okay if you don't understand. It's okay if you're not engaging with it. But um, if that's all you're going to say, then I think we'll have to just agree to disagree and you can agree to be wrong. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm okay with being uh, wrong in the eyes of somebody who believes advocating for liberty, democracy, fairness, and equality uh, is, is feels over reels. You haven't really mounted any substantive counter-argument either to the efficaciousness of a worker co-ops-led society, nor, mind you, to the fundamental differences between the legitimacy of this oligarchy and the last. And I don't know why you've accused me of not understanding collectivism as a concept when I've explained to you that collectivism isn't even relevant to the property rights discussion that you enhanced, I guess, ignorant of the fact that I'm advocating for its expansion, but that's all right. Uh, I know that you're somewhat averse to reading. This is something you would have to educate yourself on a little bit more before continuing the discussion. Would you like to talk about immigration? I had a lot of fun researching this subject since our last discussion, and I was pleased no, to find I was I'd right like on No, I'd like to everything. respond to what you've said there, because you don't... Oh, feel free. Then we can talk about immigration. You're, you're, think... you're not right on anything. I'm trying to remember. I think it was Vosh who maybe got the ball rolling. So what we could do is give well, Sargon hang, hang a chance on, hang to respond. On. I'd, like to, I'd like to respond to that because th this is that's, this is that's what I'm saying. Right. I, I was going to say if it's okay, if it was if it's okay with you guys, I want to give you a chance to respond, Sargon, right now. And then if yeah. after that, if you guys are okay with immigration, I think it's a great segue. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Right. So Vosh, you you literally kept saying the reason that you want what you want is because you'd like to see X, you'd like to see Y, and you believe that this is a way to see X and Y. Um, that's what That was your rationale. You can go back and watch the video and listen to yourself saying, I'd like this, I'd like that, right? Um, the, the idea that you think collectivism and individualism is not a relevant distinction here is ridiculous. The, there is no such thing as expanding property rights. You can't do it. It's universal. It's inherent in each person by the labor that they spend to pick up like an acorn off the floor. That acorn is now my property because of the labor I expended to pick it up. Every person is imbued with property rights because of their ability to create property through their labor. You can't expand property rights. They are universal. This is what I mean when I say you're a collectivist because that what I've said there is an individualist perspective. Each individual has these rights you don't agree with that. You think that they can expand and contract based on the state, which is what makes you a collectivist. Um, this, this is why all I can say is we'll, we'll have to go on to the next topic because there's, there's, there's no concord here. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. We can move on. I'm glad you agree that people are entitled to the fruits oh. of their labor, Carl. Yeah, but you don't. <laughs> okay, so this you're, is a You're literally segment. arguing to take away the fruits of people's <laughs> labor. I think Wait. that... I know that. Forgive me, Vosh. I know you've got another round. In no, the no, chamber. it's okay. It's it's okay. He counter argued but... himself. I don't need to finish. We can move to immigration. 
Okay. If you guys are ready for immigration, right. excellent. Thanks so much, guys. It's been a pleasure so far. So excited to, mm -hmm. to talk about immigration. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, 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 Sargon, would you like to take sort of the first kick here? Because I was the one who, who got the ball rolling with socialism. Sure. I mean, immigration has many different layers as to why it's something that should be done with great care and sensitivity. And the left has not done immigration with either. But I don't want to just uh, place the blame on the left for the failings of our immigration policies. The right is just as bad. Uh, I completely agree with Bernie Sanders when he had a, well, when he said it before he cucked that immigration is a Koch brothers idea, open brothers are a Koch brothers idea, uh, because mass immigration is class warfare. Okay. Um, it, oh, is that? So. Oh, okay, that's the, oh, okay, sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, immigration is a tricky topic. Um, I don't advocate for immediate open borders. That would obviously be rather silly if we just like drop them all down, you know, of course. Um, our system as it exists today could not handle uh, just infinite number of people coming in. That's ridiculous. What I do advocate for, however, is the sensible, and I'll term sensible in a moment, um, uh, immigration where uh, people can come into the country regardless of their race, ethnicity, culture, whatever, um, and they contribute meaningfully to our economy. They diversify our culture, something that I personally value as an American. Um, right now, in my opinion, in America, we have a really, really good rate of immigration. Our immigration system is horrible. Um, the actual like bureaucracy behind it uh, is, is, is terrible. But the actual rate of immigrants coming in seems quite well. And one thing that bothers me is when right-leaning people, and this tends to be more of a right-leaning thing, um, scaremonger uh, and say that immigration is uh, is is a uh, well to put as you said it class warfare that there's some sort of broader pawn in um in in like destroying the livability of the lower class um to to benefit the elite and while in some respects the wealthy do benefit tremendously from immigration and in some respects the poorest echelons of our society are hurt by immigration the reality is far more complicated and some people at some people maybe even among us advocates for some very silly responses to the proposed downsides of immigration um, and that's what I'm mostly interested in tackling. Right now, I think immigration in America, um, possibly even the UK, is, is at a fairly decent clip. Um, I'm obviously more familiar with the American statistics than the UK ones, but that's my position. Thanks so much. Right. Uh, I, I don't care that they contribute to our economy or diversify our neighborhoods or whatever. I don't care about those things. Um, mm -hmm. I find it interesting you say it's a really good rate in the US because I think it's the immigration rate is one of the reasons you got Donald Trump. So... Uh, yeah, get your MAGA cap. Would you like um, to clarify that? Yeah, the, I think Donald Trump is a response to mass immigration. Why? Because people don't like feeling that they are kind of losing their culture in their country. Okay, so that's a feels argument. Can you empirically demonstrate that no. immigration caused people no. to vote listen, for Donald Trump? Li so, li listen to what I said. What did I say? Repeat it to yourself. Are you going to respond? Repeat what I said. You misinterpreted it. People... Mm -hmm. don't like feeling that they are losing their country. That's okay. an empirical observation. That's not how I feel about it. That's what they seem to say. Well, yeah, that seems to... Me, so, right? so then because, you clarify, do you mean like well, we, they don't like non-white people being there or they don't no, like... No, it's not... They don't, they don't like non-Americans. It's not they don't... That's an unfair way of putting it. It's not they don't like non-Americans. But what it is, is there's been a sustained campaign of mass immigration in most Western countries for about the last 20 or 30 years and that's starting to have its toll. The social fabric is being eroded. Can you clarify? Well, what didn't you understand? Well, this is exactly what I mean by the far right pedagogy, where you sort of obfuscate the facts of immigration pedagogy. by alluding right. to a vague, silent majority that is absolutely disgusted by immigration. Uh, I want to talk about facts. I'm not interested in this sort of well, hang on vague okay, cartwheeling. Let's, let's talk about. Let's talk about facts. Let's talk about the Tory majority based on Brexit. No, no, no. I would like to talk about the impact of immigration on, immigration on the country. Okay. One second. We, we can just start, we can just poll people. Seventy percent of the British public say that they don't want immigration. That's not an like, argument. For, what for? For ending immigration? Wait. So wait, 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 wait. That's literally wait, an second. argument. Uh, argument ad. You know, populum. That's a fallacy. Do you think that an argument democracy is correct? Democracy is an people... argument ad populum. So you should never advocate for. 
Wait, hang you on, should never advocate for again. Hang, hang on, hang on. One second, gentlemen. Hang on. I'll give you. A, I want to. One second. I just. I want to defer to to Carl because it, we were do, doing kind of that like one to two minute back and forth and yeah, and yeah, yeah, totally so, but, totally fair to ask your question, Vosh. And and I, but I, I'm just a little bit nervous that if we that it, I think it was going so well with that one to two. We were minute. doing so well. Yeah, go for yeah. it. I, I'm kind of if we give maybe uh. So, you bet. Go for maybe a minute or two. Thanks so much. Sure, but the so the the objection is the the objection to private property uh, rights is that you want everyone to have a voice in society, and you think that uh, violating these will do that. But when they do, and we, when we can just ask them, and they say, "Yeah, seventy percent say we don't want mass immigration," uh, then that's argument ad populum, and they're wrong, right? Even though it's meant to be about giving them a voice, because I mean, I think people forget that politics is not based on fact. It actually is based on feelings, and we saw this starkly with the failure of Jeremy Corbyn. Uh, you can't, pre you, you, no one can, no one knows the future, so we can't say, "Oh, guaranteed this will happen, guaranteed that will happen." And if well, there's one thing we've seen, all of the like economic predictions surrounding major events in the past five years have been wrong; they've just not been correct. And so that's not what people are working on because they know that this is a representative. This is not someone who they can directly you know every individual action they they take they can hold accountable but they want to know the direction in which they're going to go in and so they they vote based on whether they feel that the person understands their problems and is in some way like them and so the most common thing you heard on the doorstep according to the labor mps or ex mps now who lost their seats uh they would just hear over and over i just don't like jeremy corbyn i just don't like jeremy corbyn i don't trust him and it's like okay well then, why should why should that not be considered to be a valid proposition for an election? Is it, like we're not. It's not a test. It's about the direction that would make people feel comfortable in which their country is going. It's not you know a country isn't an economic project. So saying oh this is going to increase the economy. Well who damn who cares? Especially if it's going to hurt you with the, say the amount of money you have in your pocket. Which man the idea of a, 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 a communist or a socialist or whatever you call yourself arguing against uh, against closing borders when you admit that the wealthy do benefit and the poorest are hurt is pretty mind-blowing i've got to say Bush. Go ahead. so there were a lot of points there um most of them were irrelevant i'm aware that people vote for who they think is right so again an argument um ad populum is the argument that something is correct just because people believe it. Yes, I support a democracy where people should be able to express their rights. That doesn't mean just because something is popular, you get to default to their opinion in lieu of actually making an argument. I can help you out with that one. Uh, the reason why you're defaulting to the general consensus of what you say, 70 something percent oppose immigration, yeah. um, is because you don't actually have the arguments. That's not an argument. That's an argument maybe for passing laws to reduce immigration, but not for whether or not it is right to pass those laws. Incidentally, you were lying to me. 44% of people in the United Kingdom want to reduce immigration. According to this poll, migrationobservatory.ox.ac.uk. I can post it in the Zoom link if you would like. I don't know where you got your statistic from, but the vast majority of UK residents want to either keep immigration the same as it is or allow more of it. So if we were to speak of democratic majority, Carl, I would be a little uh, more careful with Walsh, your sources. Walsh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, uh, whoa, hold, hold on. It's okay. Uh, yeah. We'll get to that's you soon. That's fine, that's fine. So... With that being said, uh, you made some dig at the end about a communist uh, uh, um, uh, supporting a policy that would hurt people. There are two points that I'd like to make to that. The first being, as I said earlier, immigration is a very complicated economic problem. And I would argue that immigration actually benefits poor people, as though disproportionately less than it does the rest of the population. And when I say I would argue, what I actually mean is I have a source list of documents to uh, annihilate any counter-argument you have in that respect. We can go down it if you would like. But the consensus is um, that immigration boosts the economy in general, which means a higher minimum wage, which offsets the reduction of wages that are experienced in lower um, uh, lower income segments of the economy, which means that uh, the price of commodities reduced, uh, is reduced, which means that an increased GDP and increased federal revenue means there's more money to go to social programs. It's a lot of stuff. It's a very complicated piece of the pie. And as a communist, I want people to be better off, which is why I advocate for immigration, something which empirically 
leaves people better off. Funnily enough, the people who are hurt most by immigration are actually former immigrants because they have the lowest, uh, the highest level of interchangeability um, between their respective labor. So actually the people who are hurting the most um, when, when a fresh, you know, Pakistani immigrant comes to the United Kingdom are the previous wave of fresh Pakistani immigrants. So if you delight at all in their suffering, then that maybe can be some sort of, uh, yeah, you know, um, silver lining to you. Go ahead. Thanks so much. Yeah, I don't agree with your data at all. I'm just putting a couple of things in the chat. Do you want to just pull them up for me? Um, there's one from Migration Watch and one from YouGov. Uh, the YouGov one is people who believe immigration is much too high or a little too high are 63%. People who say it's about right are 22%. Uh, 3% say it's too low, and I guess 1% say much too low, with 11% saying don't know. And then there's a Migration Watch link here that 76% want immigration reduced, 4% want increased. So can you send me through your source? So I can have a yeah, I can. This? Here you go. UK Public Opinion. This is from 2020. This is the most recent source, uh, more recent than the two of you. And it's from yeah. a, um, yeah, there you go. So still, most people want immigration reduced. No, thirty-nine out of the those who have an opinion on it, thirty-nine percent thought it should no. stay the same, while forty-four they would like it reduced. That's no, the first point. Thirty-nine percent want it remained the same. Yes, if you count having an opinion on it as only those who want to change it, the majority of people want to keep it as it is. Thirty-nine percent of get people that advocate from? for that. If you scroll down in the link that I have provided you, you'll mm -hmm. see that the bar next to remain the same as it is, is longer than the bars that don't say that. And that is how I can tell. Also, if you scroll your mouse over it, the percentage yeah, point Yeah, but that's, over that's it, one way of, in, that's one poll and one way of interpreting what you've said, but there are other ways. It depends on how you frame the question, but generally it seems that people overall want it reduced. Uh, no, it doesn't right, actually. The, My poll is the most yes, recent. And in addition, your poll yes, was asking whether or not question. people felt the levels were a little bit too high. That's not the same as asking whether they would want it changed. This is directly yeah. asking the point that you were interested in, and it affirms my position. And I'd like to remind, by the I way, disagree. I'm the one. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, oh, hang on. I'll stop platform. for you. I'm What's not going to let you just carry on. No, it, the polls do not show that, right? 44% said they would like immigration to be reduced. That's the first point on that. Uh, yes, 44% would like it reduced either a little or a lot. Yes. Um, then you have this second one where it's how much would it remain remain the same i'm sorry wait carl i'm not i'm not trying to of the quality of the thing anyway okay so you can't just appeal to that what? especially in wait, the light you, wait, of wait, wait, wait. you cut out you roll out you, you you cut out you was, repeat it, that. it was a little cutty sorry yeah no 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 it, you you can't just appeal to people going for the status quo because they don't know better especially in the light of other polls that suggest overwhelmingly that people want it reduced. Wait, especially you don't want to count? Wait, wait, wait. We just arbitrarily don't count the opinions of people who are fine with the system as it exists? No, because I'm saying we can't take an endorsement of the status quo as, as for more or less, can we? No, we take it for keeping it the same as it is, which is what I said, that the majority yeah, that, either wants to keep it the same as it is or have it improved. Or, or we can or, or say the majority increased. wants to keep it the same as it is or reduce it. And more people want to reduce it or keep it the same as it is. Yet you were the one who came in with a positive it. claim that the majority wanted to reduce immigration. So I was countering your point. Let's let's uh with Sorry, that, yeah. let's go well, back to I like mean, the two minute responses. There is the sure, migration sure. watch there is the there is the migration watch thing that I've led to you that says that seventy six percent want it reduced. And then there's the other one that says that sixty three percent think it's too high. Okay. So I don't think that's an unfair characterization at all. To like the idea you that think... you think you can claim like a categoric victory here is laughable. Boy. One, one second. I, I want to give you, Bosh. I'm going to give you a chance to respond, but just because uh, Stephen had at, he said he just wants to be sure that he gets kind of the broad outline, mm -hmm. Carl, of your position on immigration. If you'd be willing to give just a quick outline of it, and then I promise Bosh will come back to you and give you a chance to respond. Go for it. Uh, well, I'll specifically speak in Britain, um, but basically I think immigration is a form of class warfare. I think there's a reason that uh, the international socialists and the uh, international bankers and business types, that the party of Davos, as Bannon would call it, um, they, they've all aligned on this because they all see some kind of benefit. The, the international socialists seem to think that they can use immigration to save the world. 
and the international in business types think that they can use open borders to kill everyone's wages and get really, really rich in the process. That's why I think it's a form of class warfare. Got it. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, I don't know why Carl saw fit to assign my position to me. I like immigration because I think people should have the right to travel freely across borders. You get one life. I think you should be able to move to wherever you want. Enjoy your life. I'm very much for individual rights. You know, I'm very liberal in that respect. Classically, one might say. Um, I don't know what this appeal to the interests of the of the business class are. I don't know if you think the business class would be in favor of me advocating for the uh, for the seizure of private firms and making them public. The idea that we're like the stooges of the Koch brothers and what have you is fairly ridiculous, but I hear it a lot from Nazbols, so it's, it's a pretty common talking point. In reality, immigration, and again, this is empirical, and I notice that Carl is very eager to avoid the empirical argument here. He's very keen on uh, argument... Uh, populum. Uh, the empirical fact of the matter is that countries benefit from immigration. There is a very small um, reduction in the average wage of the lowest echelons of the workers in that uh, country, you know, very low level service workers or, or like agricultural workers and what have you. That absolutely is the case. However, it brings many other benefits, which I've described uh, prior in this discussion, and with even the slightest uh, uh, uptick in welfare spending or increase in the minimum wage or any of the other myriad programs that we can use to improve the lives of the poor. We compensate for the loss in wages. We more than compensate. We actually improve past that point. And we have made the entire country wealthier, happier, more productive, uh, for literally uh, no cost, um, uh, certainly not in crime rates, at least. Here in America, immigrants commit less crime than the uh, native population does. Um, Again, I speak mostly from my familiarity with American statistics, but this this is just this is just uh, unambiguously the case. Uh, Bernie Sanders' protectionist policies are one of the uh, things I disagree with him most on. I just I don't think the um, the statistics back it, and I don't think we should mindlessly oppose immigration just because some fat cats also want it. We can deal with them in other ways, redistributive policies, ways that make the country better, not ways that make it weaker. Thanks so much. I want to give Carl plenty of time to respond. It's a mm -hmm. lot of ideas there. Yeah, that was amazing. I, I Thank you. Um, right. So uh, you are right. Studies show that it depresses wages, which is why Bernie Sanders used to be against it. He used to care about the poor people in society. Uh, I find it very interesting how former immigrants are most hurt. Uh, that, that I would have thought on, on, it, on the face of it, that was enough for us to end mass immigration. Uh, but the business class absolutely view mass immigration as a form of class warfare. Uh, they see it as increasing profits at the expense of the poor immigrant workers and native, uh, let's, you know, I, I don't want to say white working class. It's not just the native white working class, especially in America. Um, there, there are other native groups, as native as we can call an American, um, who, are, who are not white, who will still be hurt by this. Uh, the, the idea, I love this, the countries benefit as the lowest wages go down. So you're exploiting the lowest paid and most vulnerable in society to get the many other benefits of mass immigration. I consider this to be deeply immoral. And I think that if you were face to face with the suffering that you're causing, then you perhaps would think that maybe we shouldn't exploit the work, the lowest paid in society. So we can, so, so the, the not the lowest paid can enjoy the fruits of that exploitation. Uh, the country is happier and wealthier, but everyone at the bottom is being exploited by billionaires. Uh, I would have thought that was a problem you were trying to fix, considering you're a communist. I can't believe you'd actually advocate for the reduction in wa wages for the poorer people in society. Um, but the fat cats are not the only problems. The, 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 in fact, I, you know, I don't really care about the financial argument, but it is a true argument. I'm more concerned with the fact that we, we, are, we are cultures with traditions and histories and heritages, and there are definitely places that you can see that immigration has changed that and er eroded that. And so you can't reasonably say that, you know, Birmingham or London are English cities. These are not cities that tend to follow the English traditions. And that's concerning, considering that's the two largest cities in England, I would say. So, and I, th I think that people have, I think that's a valid concern that people have. Thanks yeah, okay. So, so in the future, Carl, I would appreciate it if you made arguments I hadn't already responded to. Because your spiel on fat cats and hurting the poor was something I deliberately addressed in my last segment. Uh, I notice you have no counter arguments. Did you think 
the audience I wouldn't notice. Okay, look. Um, so I well, 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 hold on. Well, hold on. Forth. You had hang your on, moment. Hang on. No, Wait, no, 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 no. Hold on one through, second. Is it? We could go through minutes it, of rhetoric each, right? But there's obviously something here about. Wait, 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 James. Saying that we don't understand. I, I understand that he's upset, am, but that wasn't my segment. I am. No. If it's if it's okay, Carl. If we if I promise, we'll come right back to you to to address it. Okay, okay, it's fine. But right. So uh, again, in the future, just pretend that I'm responding to your argument. Like, imagine that you have to move the conversation beyond <laughs> do, where you I already are. Um, I, just imagine in your head so you don't keep making the same arguments. I have to. But anyway, so I've already addressed about half of your first segment, which was where you uh, pretended that I hadn't talked about other forms of redistributive policies or how the entire country benefits or how immigration leads to an increase in the minimum wage and federal budget, which goes towards welfare programs and all the many, many ways in which it benefits everyone and only harms poor people in an inc incredibly shallow way that gets compensated for by other economic factors. I know that's all very complicated. The two points you actually did deign to make were A, that it is deeply immoral not to care about the poor. Uh, I do care about the poor, so this doesn't apply to me, but I do find it funny that you were very keen to dismiss the needs of the poor. Again, like 80% of the country lives paycheck to paycheck, and you were the one arguing that any change to the status quo, which is attempting to fix that, is a violation of property rights. So you seem very keen on the poor when it comes to a 2% decrease in wages following um, the immigration of millions of people. But when it comes to 80% of the country living paycheck to paycheck, uh, not being able to save up money for their retirement, not being able to afford a $400 emergency, you just seem very keen on ignoring that. It almost makes it seem like your issue with immigration has nothing to do with the economy, and you're just latching on to that incredibly weak argument when every economist agrees immigration is a slam dunk economic benefit. But that's okay. I wouldn't be honest with my intentions either in your position. Because your last argument is your real argument, and I'm glad you saved it for last, this culture changing uh, thing. Um, I don't know by what metric London isn't an English city. The majority of its residents were born in England. Um, which, I mean, I, I, even if that wasn't the case, it is within England. It is an English city in every legal sense. I don't know what you mean by uh, not an English city. Uh, what is an American city? Is, uh, is, is, is Pensacola, Florida an American city? Because its culture is very different to Seattle or New York or Los Angeles, which are other American cities. I don't think you can determine, actually, what type of nation a city belongs to by the culture of its inhabitants. Uh, London is a very impressive city in many ways. It has other problems, undoubtedly, that should be addressed. Uh, to call it not English, I think, is... Um, uh, I don't know. A little stupid. Well, uh, okay. let's give uh, Carl plenty of time to respond. Of course. Okay. Uh, I I I think that's absolutely hilarious. I I think you haven't done much traveling. If you think you can't determine uh, the country a city is in by the culture of the inhabitants, that's absurd. Um, the, it's about just them identifying as English. They don't identify as English. They don't consider themselves to be English. They don't follow English traditions. They don't really care about the history of the country, and they don't care about the, um, the sort of culture of it. And I think those are things worth caring about. Um, but more importantly, I, 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 I'm not going to just let you walk away from the fact that you are a communist who is arguing for the increase in billionaire wealth at the expense of the poorest people in society. It's not, that it, it's, it's not even immoral not to care about the poor. That's not immoral to not care about something. It's immoral to exploit them to improve the size of billionaire checks. What, and then the thing is, from this, it drives you to necessarily have to violate people's rights, in this case, property rights, whereas we could just avoid violating property rights by simply not allowing mass immigration. Because they, this is, as you admit, driving people's wages down, and I'm sure that contributes to them living paycheck to paycheck. If there was a buyer's market for, um, uh, if there was a seller's market for labor, uh, not a buyer's market for labor, then these people would need minimum wages. But the problem is, it's a seller's market. Uh, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a buyer's market for labor. The corporations have all the cards because they are never a shortage for workers because of mass immigration. It's just harmful to these people. You're putting them in a position they can't really escape from. And what you're saying is, right, now we're going to have to use excessive state power and revolution. I think that this is just the wrong way to go. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, so um, I, I can't remove earwax. Uh, I don't know if you haven't heard me uh, explain the myriad ways in which immigration benefits the economy in such a way as to compensate for the incredibly minor. And all the economists who have written on this, by the way, they're very clear to say this is an incredibly minor 
decrease in the average wages of the lower echelon of our economic hierarchy. I think it's funny, by the way, that you say that immigration is part of the reason why so many Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, when every single economic source I looked over indicated that the percentage of people in America who were affected by immigration and had their wages lowered were high school dropouts, which constitute a fairly small percentage of this country. I think it was around 12 to 13 percent. 80 percent of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. That's not immigration, my friend. That's capitalism, because the majority of Americans benefit in terms of wage growth from the existence of immigration. So nice try, trying to skip on by that one. I don't know what your point was with Londoners don't identify as English. If you could provide me a source or like a polling data where, where Londoners were asked if they thought they were English or something. Maybe a lot of them said no because they're immigrants. Uh, I don't know what that means for the city. Uh, 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 this seems like an incredibly weird point to make. I, I, I don't know. Londoners don't identify as... I, I don't even have a counter argument for that one. If you have data, I would be very interested in seeing it. Um, I think London is a city and it's in England and most of its inhabitants are English citizens. So it seems like by any metric, um, the, the, the city is English. The reason why I say you can't really make a, uh, uh, like sort of a, a cross comparison between the culture of a city and the country and it's in is because I live in America. Um, uh, um, I live in America. We have a incredible range of cultures here in this country, uh, many of which, and this isn't just an immigration thing, many of which are, have been in this country for a very long time, from Appalachia to the west to the east coast, to the south to the northeast. We have a huge range of countries in this place, or sorry, sorry, of cultures in this country. And I don't know which one of them is American. It, it seems like there isn't really an American culture. There's no single one. There are just cities and people, and we all live in a border, and we try our best to make our way, you know, making our way downtown, walking fast. Uh, and London, I imagine, is the same way. I have not been to England. I imagine that if I traveled its breadth, I would find that there are different cultures in different cities, not just from London to the rest of England, but from the north to the south, from the east to the west, from larger cities to smaller cities. And I would come to the conclusion, as I have here in America, that trying to make some ubiquitous determination as to a nation's default culture and whether or not a city is part of that country because it has that culture it's 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 nonsense it's it's pseudo it's it's pseudo sociology it, you can't you know falsify any of it it's just feelings and i don't like feelings i like facts i'm very fact oriented here on my channel thanks so much uh yeah sorry i'm just finishing my notes so i like your your understanding of uh, and your your view of um, uh, people as part of groups is laughable. I mean, you can wow. like for example in the tw the the data. <laughs> can you show me some data? Yeah, it's called the census, Borsh. It's called the census. I have it Everyone up in front of me. Out. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in 2011, which was the last one, and this was quite some time ago, after much mass immigration, uh, only 45% of the city identifies as white British. Are so you... Do you believe non-white kind of people... makes the point, doesn't it? ...can be British? Bosch, I don't care what you think is racist. I don't care, Bosch. What? But what I'm saying well, is wait, that most people... Do you think non-white people, people can be British? One most sec. people, Bosch, in the United Kingdom, do not identify as British. Uh, in in London, sorry, not in the East Kingdom. Sorry. Uh, do not identify as British. Therefore, your opinion on my opinion on who is and is not British is not relevant because we're just asking people how they identify. They don't think they are, and so that's the end of that conversation. Based anyway, on what nationality or ethnicity? Vosh, based on their own self identification, and that's in, enough in for me. Nationality or ethnicity? Vosh, 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 why can't you just answer? My turn, it, Vosh. It's my turn to talk, isn't it? So, All right. Uh, based on self identification. Um, and honestly, I don't understand how you don't understand that you keep saying that you are you and you know you are targeting the poorest in society, and you are justifying targeting them for exploitation by saying it's only a minor decrease and everyone else benefits. Why should the poorest in society carry that burden? I think that richer people should go without in order to not exploit the poorest in society. And I thought I was the capitalist. So you've admitted already that immigrants, uh, immigration hurts prior immigrants and the lowest learning. You, you have no leg to stand on here. Yeah. Um, 
Right. Okay. So I've addressed the latter point like six times now. Um, yeah. So no, you what you're, what you're you advocating for is it. just, Carl, it's okay. You'll get a chance again. Uh, what you're advocating <laughs> for is an ethno state. Um, and I can prove that. I have the data right here. We can actually look at it on my stream. Uh, so the number of Londoners as of the 2011 census showed that 63.3% of London's population was born in England. They're English citizens. So the majority of people in England are English. You said a minority, as in less than 50%, are white British, which suggests that you aren't counting non-white English people as part of what constitutes an English identity in the country. And this is a problem we ran into the last time we talked. Um, you're advocating for an ethnostate. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You're using people's ethnic identity as a descriptive to determine whether or not they are legitimately English. Now, nationality, I, I, I get, you know, if you weren't born in England, that's totally fine to say that person not English. I think that's valid. Maybe if they've lived there like 60 years or something, but that's getting in the weeds. You're using ethnicity. And I'm, I'm going to be honest, as a liberal, as someone who believes in the principles of liberalism, you know, I'm very, I'm very much big on that classical liberalism. I'm not a big fan of ethnostates. Carl. And it's a little weird to me that you would deliberately sidestep clarifying whether you mean ethnicity or nationality because you're too cowardly to acknowledge the fact that it is in fact ethnicity that you're using as the determining factor in whether or not you consider a person English. You'll note, if you want to go over the census, which I have in front of me, I can show it to my stream too, many people in this census who recorded their ethnic identities fit into a category of either Asian or Asian British. Asian or Asian British, black or black British. The ethnicity section doesn't distinguish between national identity because that's not what it's trying to do. It's their ethnicity. And I would say, by the way, I'm, uh, what's my ethnicity? I am Irish and Polish for the most part. And if you asked me what I am, I would say I am an American because even though my ethnic identity does not come from America, my personal identity, my nationality, is American, as are many of the English people you are saying are not legitimately a part of England, are not part of the English identity. I don't really have any, like, I mean, if you want to argue in favor of an ethnostate, you're fine. I have sources on those too. Um, but is that really an argument you want to be on the table making? Thanks so much. Walsh, these people don't identify as English. Ethnically. Ethnically, they don't identify as American. I don't identify as American ethnically, but I am yeah, but still American. Whether you, are, whether you identify as it or not, you Do you know what are. an ethnicity is? This is an ethnostate. Yes. You're one saying sec, a national identity you, is determined by ethnicity. Define ethnicity for me, Vosh. Just because I just want to be sure that Carl gets that uh, roughly two minutes or so. And, no, uh, I'm interested. I, I'd like to do a bit of back and forth. What, what okay. do you think ethnicity is defined as, Vosh? Ethnicity, a N ethnicity, not one's ethnic identity, is What's defined by. Group? I'm sorry? What's an ethnic group? An ethnic group are people to yep. adhere to an ethnicity, and an ethnicity is determined by a people with a collective culture, nationality, language, heritage. There are a lot of things that could determine one's ethnicity. Yeah, but that's not race, is it? N no, I'm not no. talking about race. I'm talking about ethnicity. I never said race. Neither am I. These people who are in London, the the, the majority of people in London view themselves as being an ethnicity that does not originate in the British Isles. Yes. And you are making right. ethnicity the determining characteristic as to whether or not they are English. No, they don't call themselves English. Yes, they ethnically. They are making that. No, ethnically. Yeah, they no. are saying they ethnically do not identify as English. If they ethnically identified as English, I wouldn't care where they came from. If they, if they came, like, this is literally what my grandfather did, you Ooh. right? He came over here to become English but they have not come here to become English. I have a problem with that. Why Wait, don't you, you do know ethnicity doesn't mean the culture you subscribe to, right? Here in America, so, so again, I mean, I don't know Actually, how much time you spend. part of it is the culture no, and the language can and be, the history. But it's not yes. determinant. So it you can, can come here. You can be. come here to America. Of course, it, of course it can be. And there are can. and there are weebs can. who are American can. who are born in America. Carl, 
Can you stop acting like a child for a moment and listen to the argument that you're going to attempt to rebuke? <laughs> if you come over Go here on. to America, you'll find that there are people who are very much American, who have been here for generations, that are ethnicities all over the place. What's your ethnic identity? I'm Korean. I'm Indian. I'm Irish. I'm Russian. You get this all over the place. Uh, people don't really say American as an ethnicity because of the unique socio-political history of our country. But if you ask these people, nonetheless, if they're an American, they'll say yes. And culturally, these people are all the same. They don't. If you're ethnically Korean because your great great grandmother came over here in 1914, that doesn't mean when you say you're ethnically Korean that you still subscribe to the cultural values of the Korean people. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way. You are using ethnicity to determine whether or not a person is English as a culture or as an identity. We are speaking yes. only of ethnicity. Yes, 100%. That's how it's determined. Okay, you, then, then you are by definition genius. advocating for an ethno state. And what's unique is, I think in this case, it's not because you're racist. It's because you're too stupid to know the definition of ethnicity. You think <laughs> it means back. what culture are you a part of? And I don't it know can, if I have the Bush. time and energy to explain L to you. Literally. You read out the words. Can, it can be can, Of course yes, anything can. can. Can you find me census data on the identified culture of different ethnic groups? Culture, not their yes, ethnicity or their nationality. They identify as not being English. I'm not Ethnically, saying it's a racial yes. identification. For some of them, it might be racial, but that's not my criteria. It's, but for them, they and you, you in America, like you say, it's a unique position you're in. That's why you have hyphenated Americans. They are not just Koreans, they are Korean Americans. Asian or Asian British. There is Asian or hang Asian hang African. I, I, it's I, here I, in the census. You have the same thing. Do you know why? Shut up. Let's, let's give Can you, can we'll you mute him so I can have my time to talk, please? Um, you have a particular unique circumstance in the United States. We do not have that in Europe. That is not the same thing here. So, uh -oh. One sec. You, so sorry, Carl. On what no, this is improving the connection. The, people. Not how the, connection, the, people who have come the connection here. was just fading for a little bit. So I'd say those last two sentences, Carl, if you could say those again. One more time, Carl. <laughs> Sorry about that. Can, can we mute Vosh while I'm talking? Okay. <laughs> Vosh, can you, Vosh, can you do me a favor and I'm, give I'm that very calm. I'll chill out. Sorry. Um, the people who have come here simply do not identify as English. I don't want England's capital city to be a non-English city. I don't want her second city to be a non-English city. These are arguments from ethnicity that is correct. I'm not saying they can't become English. I'm not saying they shouldn't be encouraged to become English. They should be encouraged to become English. Because like we said, this is not about race. This is about self-identification, about belief, how you feel about yourself. And we are not, uh, there, are, there are lots of immigrants who come over with the intention of becoming a part of the historical continuum that is Britain or England or whatever whatever way you want to describe it. But there are also lots of people here who have absolutely no intention. And I think that is unacceptable. I think that's a form of exploitation of the native population. I mean, at the end of the day, the English don't have anywhere else to go, but these people do if things all go wrong. So I think we do have to be cognizant of that. But finally, Ivos, and this is the most important thing, you are not addressing, now, despite you trying to have wave it away the fact that you were a communist arguing for the exploitation of the poor right okay so first of all you're lying uh american uh, ethnicities are often hyphenated african-american or uh, uh korean-american we do do that and you'll find here and i'm showing it on my stream in the um in the census for england this is on london data specifically but this is the language that's used elsewhere asian or asian british or uh, for Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, or British or Black British, you know, mixed white and Black Caribbean. The reason why they do this is because the people who wrote the census know that A, ethnicities are not determinate of one culture, and B, because ethnicities can become mixed and dissoluted and have more to do with one's identity. Sorry, sorry you're gonna have to you're gonna have to repeat that from. I, I, I hang on, I, I didn't I didn't hear you. Sorry, it went roboty on my end. It said from the 2011 census and then it went robot. That's okay. I'd love to make this point a second time. So Ooh. with here the 2011 census, we can see the reason why we use terms like Asian or Asian British being put in the same box 
or black and black British being put in the same box is because the um, people who took the census or who made the census wanted to make it perfectly clear, and they gave the option to those who um, wrote into the census that whether you identify as, uh, say, for example, Pakistani ethnically or um, or British Pakistani, whether you intend on adhering to the culture of your home country or intend on integrating into the culture of England, those are grouped into the same category because ethnicity is not a determining factor in one's cultural identity, which is why there are Korean Americans here in America who just act like regular fucking Americans, except they uh, I don't know. They seem to be more fashionable in my personal experience. And there are Indian Americans who just act like Americans. And if you go over to England, then I will say this confidently, despite having never been to England, you will find there are plenty of people who, over the past four generations, have come from other countries and ascribe to other identities ethnically, nonetheless act British. And the reason for that, and the reason I'm capable of recognizing that, is because I don't believe in ethnostates. What Carl just did, even though, again, he doesn't know what ethnicity means, that's fine, I guess. I'm not here to educate well, I him. I defined it for Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Um, that's fine yeah, if he doesn't understand. Much, but what he's advocating for, much. either through malice or ignorance, is an ethnostate. He even made the um, he even made the the classic argument at the end there. English people have nowhere else to go, but they can come here. He made the uh, Asia for Asian people, Africa for Black people, uh, Western country for everyone. He made the classic uh, white nationalist argument there. Um, but again, I doubt he understands the nuances of the arguments he would have to make to win that. So I'm going to back off him on there. Um, I don't believe in ethnostates, Carl. I believe in liberalism. You know, I believe that people should be able to You're live in the countries they want and that I don't think their uh, uh, ethnic identities going decades or even centuries back should determine whether or not you consider them legit legitimately English. I think that's uh, frankly quite immoral. Um, if that cinches up the immigration thing, because I didn't hear any hang on, hang on, hang on, don't, on the... don't pretend. Whoa, I didn't finish. I'm just advocating for another point. No you, more. you, you were about to change the subject. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, subject. I'm putting forward the offer, Carl. It's a, do you want to stick on this? Well, uh, have you finished talking or not? Do you want? Do you want to stick on this point? Yes, I do want. To oh, stick okay, on this. okay. Well, far talking? be it for me to step past have, you. Partner. Have you finished talking? Um, have you finished talking? Yeah. Let me let me think of a closing argument. Then be here. quiet. Um, then be quiet. Yeah, if you've talking, I think that. Whoa, so whoa, 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 if Carl! I remember right, if I remember right, I want to try Don't to remember. Upset, just shush. If I remember, it might have. It was at Vosh. I think you might have gotten the ball rolling on this topic. If I remember right, and what we could do is, if you have any final last pithy points to add on to that, Vosh, we can give you that chance, and then otherwise we'll go over to Carl after that. Yeah, and... I think I want a last sentence or two, and then Carl can say whatever the hell he wants, and then we can move to another topic if you'd like. Um, but, but yeah, uh, final point. Um, again, I, 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 he doesn't know what ethnicity means. That's fine. I'm not an ethnostater. Um, and I think it's fitting then um, that Carl is so dishonest and disingenuous when he talks about the economic output uh, or the consequences of immigration. It's not because he actually cares about the poor. His economic positions make that perfectly clear. It's because he's looking for a sort of back alley economic justification for marginalizing the people he sees as immigrants into his country. Uh, it's a very common tactic. People have been doing it for hundreds of years. And people keep falling for it too so i mean godspeed to him if it keeps working right and carl you can uh you can go for it are you prepared to be quiet now i'll take yep. your silence as a yes um i find that really funny um i defined ethnicity for you i sent you the link on the thing to the ethnic the definition of ethnic group that we commonly use with the express purpose of pointing out that this is not about race because when you say the ethno staters they are talking about race you know they are talking about race. They just use ethnostate as a misnomer because ethnicity has been conflated for whatever reason with race. And in fact, it's not specifically about race at all. Um, I will embrace the Dalai Lama's white nationalism, Europe for the Europeans, as he says. I, I do think that people are ethnic group peoples are entitled to homelands. I actually do think that's a thing. I think that you couldn't really argue against it because then you're arguing against literally every every uh independence movement from the british empire what is this a, a, an indian an indian ethno state what's wrong with the british being here what's you know it's it's ridiculous um but mainly this isn't about my consideration i like the way that voice was framing this again to claim i'm using dishonest tactics is remarkable because he's not he's not accepting that he's the one who's advocating for persecuting and exploiting the poor and the immigrants in order to make everyone's life everyone else's lives uh, nicer and then he's ignoring the fact that again 
It's what these people identify as. They do not consider themselves to be English. Now, I'm not saying there can't be any people who don't identify as English, but I think that when you get to the point where it's the majority of, a, a majority of the people in the capital city who don't think of themselves as English, I think there are broader questions there that need to be asked. And pretending offence, because that broader question is being asked, it, it doesn't matter whether you think it's good or bad, there are going to be people who have that conversation without you. So shutting it down is no good at all. And lying about being a liberal, considering you're openly a communist, is a bizarre <laughs> tactic and just makes you look more dishonest. So uh, I'm happy now to move on to the next. Uh, I think possibly. you bet. And just to be fair, because I, I might be wrong about this, so forgive me if I accidentally said the wrong thing, Bosch. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that you started, but someone in the live chat said that it was the opposite, that you started the first topic and that uh, Carl started this one. Yes. Okay. So if you do want to, if you want to do a, a pithy uh, closing, I can give you that. Otherwise, if you want, uh, we could go, we could either wrap it up. We could go to the next topic. Or um, if you, like I said, if you want to do a pithy response, you can, I, I can, I'll do a little pithy response here. Um, we could do the next topic. I know Carl's positions on transgenderism are incoherent though. So I imagine it would be a uh, a rather sort of like NPC kind of like pre-coded um, dialogue tree. Hold on, Hold on Carl. One sec. Um, so yeah, to, to finish it, basically, uh, well, well, Carl is... Hang on, Carl, whoa, Carl, calm down, I think snowflake. So. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We have to agree I think... to some kind of understanding here. Carl, um, I think Carl, Carl my, my, my man, Carl, it's going to be your turn soon. You'll get the conch, you'll get the speaking show. So sorry. You don't know what I think on a subject, and you're not even going to ask me. What, what I'd like so to do is making these categoric declarations is really unproductive. Carl, I think if you want to talk more, you can always DM me. I have plenty I think of weekends if, off. Vosh, Vosh, if you're willing to, <laughs> if you're willing to, if we just kind of keep uh, the topics in like strict categories, oh, yeah. if strict you're categories. To, yeah, we yeah. can give well, you a pithy response on immigration pithy, and then a pithy we can give little response. Uh, so uh, yeah, to, to put it simply, um, what Carl advocated for, at least in the first section there was, was white nationalism. Um, it's true he isn't speaking of race, he is speaking of ethnicity. That's why the term ethnostate is ethnostate and not race state. Um, many people use ethnostate interchangeably with, say, for example, a white nationalist state. And he wasn't doing that. He's speaking specifically of Britain. But then he went ahead and say he agreed with this, the, the Dalai Lama's proposal of Europe for the Europeans and Africa for the Africans and what have you, which which is, yeah, essentially it's advocating for ethnostates. Um, so he made that rather easy for me. And uh, again, I don't know how many times I have to keep saying it. I love it when he gives me the chance to because I'm right. So it makes me look really good. But um, immigration, even with the decrease to the average wage of low paid workers, benefits low paid workers. It also benefits the immigrants because the immigrants chose to came there. You chose to come there, usually from poorer countries, in search of job opportunities and um, uh, economic opportunities that wouldn't have been available to them in their home countries. We benefit from that. Something like fifty percent of all patents filed over the past, uh, I think it was in twenty seventeen. I would need to recheck that statistic. Were done by immigrants. That's an incredible statistic. There's a lot of innovation going on there. Everyone benefits. But if you want to keep white people in England and non-white people out, then yeah. I'd be anti-immigration too. Thank you very much. And now, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of who to start with because I know Carl wants to clarify something with regard to the transgender. By the way, I want to mention, folks, with regard to transgenderism, if you are trans, you are more than welcome here, whether you be gay, straight, uh, transgender, no matter who you are, Democrat, Republican, you know, everybody, we want you to feel welcome no matter where you are. So I think, and just to preface this one, because I'm like, ooh, this is the one that makes me the, the most nervous is I, I suspect that it's fair to say that both of our speakers, you know, have the same kind attitude towards trans people. It's just that they may have different ways in which they might think that uh, how we can best treat trans people or how a society can kind of uh, be best off overall. And so I just want to kind of preface that, that uh, I think this will hopefully go smooth. So here we go, guys. Uh, whoever would like to start, I'm, I'm open to if you guys... Go for it, Carl. Preference. Sure. Um, I think that, uh, un unlike Borsch, a person's body is their own property, and they're entitled to the fruits of that. And that means that as a as a as a, an informed uh, an adult that can give informed consent, uh, they can modify their body in any way which way they please. I really don't have any particular opinions on this. Um, but I do have concerns when we start introducing things like puberty blockers, which, uh, if I recall correctly, are a form of chemical castration, which then leads on to actual castration. 
and this can all be done quite young. In Britain, these procedures are not very well developed. They're quite experimental, as are the drugs. Um, we don't know what the long-term effects are, but there are suggestions that it increases cancer rates and things like that. Um, I think that it's the sort of thing that we possibly shouldn't be grooming children into, and I think there is a significant aspect to that at the moment in my country. It's led by rabid activists who are commanding the dialogue because other people are just too afraid to speak out, or they're actively silenced, uh, which is a concern of mine. I don't like censorship either. Um, so, yeah, adults, consenting adults should be able to do what they like, but uh, I don't think it should be should be something that we encourage children to do. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, yeah, obviously I agree with Sargon and that adults should be able to do whatever they like with their body. Uh, I have good news for Sargon. Uh, he's been completely misinformed on puberty blockers. I understand the discourse has shifted somewhat. Or initially, conservative people argued mostly against just trans people. Uh, and now that that battle is being sort of lost slowly, we move now to uh, more uh, what they consider to be indefensible aspects of, of this thing. Um, so here we go. Again, I can provide the link here, if you'd so like. Puberty blockers are safe, well-studied, completely reversible, endorsed by critical medical and endocrinological associations, and effective at reducing dysphoria, anxiety, and depression. If it turns out you don't end up having um, uh, uh, gender dysphoria... Link, hmm? Where, where's the link? I can't there you go. It. Um, so this is just a news link, and I can provide like academic citations following that. I will be bringing those in soon. Um, do, do. The human brain. Yes. So, um, oh, that's a dead link. Well, I can fix that. Anyway, as I speak, the um, uh, uh, they are essentially quite well tested because they had medical use prior to their uh, implementation as puberty blockers. Uh, I take issue with your use of the term grooming um, to describe, like we're grooming kids into it. I don't think that's how it happens at all. Uh, usually this is children who are uh, 10, 11, 12, you know, sort of not quite pubescent. And it, it is suggested or sort of picked up on that they may have early onset gender dysphoria or indications they might have it in the future. They speak with a psychiatric professional and the professional can delay their puberty through puberty blockers for a short time um, until they make the decision whether or not they actually want to commit. If they don't commit, they can get off those puberty blockers. Uh, and if they do, then obviously there you go, wrong puberty prevented. Thanks so much. So to be clear, I mean, I'm not, I'm I'm not aware of what source you're using to suggest that uh, puberty blockers are not a form of chemical castration. Where where are you where are you seeing that exactly? What is what do you mean by chemical castration? Well, is it it means they can't reproduce? Well, they're prepubescent, so no. They, yeah. So it is. Well, it delays puberty. Yeah. And if so, if they're not in, right. pu no, not indefinitely, it's reversible. No? You can just stop taking right. it and then your puberty will happen. Right. You might be a little bit shorter if you were assigned male at birth. I think that, I think that sure. is the case, like a half inch or an inch or something. But um, I, I, I guess I would have to go and look it up uh, because there, I, I've got lots of sources here that uh, on Google, obviously, uh, right. that suggest that it is, but I can't read through the studies as we're at of course. now. Yeah. So I don't know who to believe on who's right and who's wrong on that. Um, but the the full bone treatment of I mean you you're not going to say that's not castration right? Oh I, oh well, bottom surgery yeah of course yeah yeah absolutely that's obviously castration. Um, hmm. I'd say I'm probably not in favor of sexual reassignment surgery for children um, even if they're absolutely 100 percent trans and have gender dysphoria. Um, that's probably something they should hold off on. Why? Um, because the reversibility of that condition is significantly less than the reversibility of other like preemptive stages to that point. And there are lots of trans people who are comfortable keeping the genitalia they were born with. And that might be a decision they would prefer holding off on until, um, un until they're sort of old enough to sign their own consent forms. I could maybe, maybe there are good arguments for them to be able to do it at 16 or something. I need to read those though. Right now. I, just I mean, I, I fully agree with your argument. There. I think that's a, I think that's a very well put argument actually. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I really do think that are essentially what you can categorize as a grooming operation. Uh, they, there seems to be deliberate attempts in order to make children uh, who are not certain about themselves, and a, a lot of children are not, uh, to get them to identify as trans. And when it's being promoted by you know schools and you know uh, media outlets, things like this, you know Teen Vogue stuff like this, uh, this, this is what it becomes trendy. This way you have like the trans trender phenomenon. And I think that, you know, th there's probably an argument against making 
transgendering uh, cool and popular. I realize that, you know, it's not easy being trans and that you're going to have a lot of other problems in your life. But I think that uh, erring on the side of caution and prudence with such a serious uh, concern, a serious uh, life event, is probably wise. I, so um, so a, f a few points here. Grooming is the act of preparing a child with the intention of committing a sexual offense. Um, seeing as how nothing about the process of treating transgender Damn. children is a sexual offense, it seems like a weird word to use. I see, I have seen, and I have looked into this because this comes up so often, I have seen no evidence of there being this broad conspiracy for the media and schools to trick children into thinking they're trans. And what I have seen, and I will concede this point, is that uh, there are some trans-oriented psychiatric um, uh, or, or, or medical institutions that have maybe been over-prescribing diagnoses of gender dysphoria. Um, but we over-prescribe everything. At least here in America, everything gets over-prescribed. I swear to God, everyone and their dog is autistic now. So... Um, so I don't know if this is part of like some conspiracy to make people trans and it speaks to an earlier point that you made too. You said like these organizations are being, are, are falling to bias from activist groups, but I haven't seen that as well. And that seems like the refuge of the anti-intellectual. When the data disagrees with you, you back up and say that the data isn't real data. Actually, it's just, uh, it's just being sort of cajoled there by, by, by the weight of activist groups and real scientists would disagree with it. When of course, in reality, the scientific community pretty much has a consensus on the issue. Thank you. Are you going? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, we, we got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you went a you went a bit robotly, but I think I got you. Um, I I totally disagree that there's not a problem with trans activists in the UK, uh, at least. But I think we've got a problem with trans activists in America as well. And these are not necessarily trans people either, but just the activists in favour of it. Um, I think that given the weight of the decisions that you are making about your body, like even any kind of chemical treatment, these chemicals do give. Uh, a, an increased risk of uh, cancer. Let's assume that they don't cancer, but I think that they do. Um, but let's assume they don't. There are still other negative effects, and you like osteoporosis and other bone problems and things like this. It's not generally a favorable thing to want to do. And so, if we're over prescribing things like over prescribing paracetamol, not so bad. Over prescribing hormone treatments, probably, again, I think something we should be more prudent about. Um, I totally stand by that. The, the use of the term grooming there. I think that's exactly correct, as you described it. Um, but then I guess I'm not as woke as you. Well, no, it's just factually incorrect. To groom a child is to prepare them for sexual offense. Yeah. Do you think that making, do you think that providing medical care to a trans child is sexually assaulting or, or molesting them? Well, when you say sexual offense, I think that can that, that can be expanded to include things regarding their sexuality that aren't sexually assaulting them. So how exactly? Um, I, th I think that then? there are definitely, I, I mean, there are definitely uh, a, a sizable number of young men who are effeminate and gay who are, gr I, I do think it is groomed into believing can you provide uh, falsely any citation that they are actually this? women in men's bodies, but they don't agree. Uh, and they, well, no, it's not they don't agree, they're confused. They're persuaded into it and then come out of the other side, hopefully before they've had the surgery. I've spoken okay, to many so here's a them. link from a Eureka alert. Uh, Eureka alert, sorry. Medical intervention in transgender adolescents appears to be safe and effective. It's from San Francisco. I don't know if that city is to SJW for you or whatever. There is no evidence it to is mind. Actually. <laughs> well, then you're free to dismiss all the credible academic and scientific evidence that comes well, out. Well, that's of the thing. You, you say it's credible, but I'm. I'm Wait, you're literally going concerned. to dismiss evidence because it came from San Francisco? I was joking about you. Are you actually going to? Evidence Stand by that. Isn't God evidence is not perfect? If it was created by man, it's an right. So, so what you're describing on, right now is, is I anti. I don't know if I'm yeah, not sure if the audience. Carl, are you here? On. One sec. I don't know. I don't know if the audience heard you, Carl. Carl. Impartiality so, and reliability and the Carl. world Carl. evidence. Carl, it's, and it's it's the same what? principle. It's ideologically. It's, and, and can be cherry picked the, and, and groomed itself. Carl, you were literally so arguing it's, it's against not, the concept I mean, I can, of empirical reason. I, uh, right now. Wait one sec. I couldn't actually hear Carl, so I, I just want to because on I think my audio, what I'm hearing is I think what's going out on OBS. I just wanted to see Carl, maybe just those last like it was probably like three sentences yeah. where his robot. -y. 
Yeah, James, I can if, summarize. If, he if, said if, that when evidence disagrees with him, second. it's How about you let me summarize my points, Vosh? You'll take twice as long, but go for it. Vosh, I, I, th I think that these people are deeply ideological. I think that everyone following the, the trans agenda, shall we call it, is, is very ideologically invested in this. And same with any kind of ideological group, in my opinion. If I were to present you studies from Nazi Germany that suggested that actually, you know, the Untermensch does deserve the, the, the gas or whatever, uh, you would say, well, okay, you may have what appears to be evidence in your hand of X. However, I don't trust the way in which it was gathered. Now, that doesn't mean uh, that the, the actual process of gathering the data was wrong, but what it means is the things that are being collected, the the the, the editorial bias in the information is in what you are looking for and how you interpret what you have. Um, and we don't have time to go through one another's studies right now. Um, so I'm not just going to accept a study from California that says, oh, by the way, trans transitioning is appears to be safe and effective. Yeah. So this, so yeah, this is literally just anti-intellectualism. Uh, essentially, if a if a study yeah, provides, and, wait, whoa, whoa holy shit, one Carl. One hold on, but I, hold on. I think it, it might it might be that Carl's UK, connection dropped. I don't know if he was done. Medical boards that say, well, when, well, these are hold, so sorry, Carl. Untested. Carl, I don't know if you can hear me. Frontier, and we're allowing like there, there was a new the day. Carl, uh, I'm uh, so sorry to stop you. We we totally can't hear you. Year olds, yeah, is he still going? I I, I can't. Hear I don't think he say. can hear us. Oh, sorry, Carl. Sorry. I I, yeah, I think the yeah, connection. Sorry, st 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 start start. I think it was the last like yeah, 15, sorry. 15 seconds to be honest. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I I couldn't hear. Voice started talking, then it started roboting. So. Okay, so I, yeah, I think it was like right around there. I, we couldn't tell if you were done or if it was if the connection was getting weak. If you if you want to give a chance to if you want a chance to give those last fifteen seconds or so, we can give you a, that fifteen seconds. Yeah, back. I, I I think I, I I'm I would need to go through the thing myself uh, to to be sure that I'm not dealing with a group that is obviously ideologically biased. And so I don't just take the thing on face value. Gotcha. But, okay. Thank you. Are we good? You bet. Okay, so what Carl's describing here is literally like the height of anti-intellectualism. We can set aside ideolo uh, like ideological differences for a moment. I've argued with people who have very different ideas than I do, obviously. Uh, what he did was he saw a study and he found a reason to not believe it, and then he decided why he shouldn't believe it. The Nazis were an organization that had empirical evidence of having engaged in bias research. Additionally, even if you looked at their research itself, the bias was evident in the text. Carl has not looked at this uh, this part or source, nor its methodology, but he has decided, in spite of having provided no evidence in favor of his point, that there's this conspiracy to deliberately groom children into being trans. He's decided that this one just, it's like, it just, it doesn't agree with him. So, you know, why, why pay it any mind? That's kind of how he handles most of his, um, most of his engagement with research. And that's one of the things that frustrates me. There's actually no point in having this conversation, uh, much in the same way that I wouldn't, probably wouldn't waste my time arguing with a flat earther or a, um, or a, uh, uh, um, or like uh, the anti-vaxxer, um, it's because I'm only capable of engaging in scientific discussion of scientific topics if people believe fundamentally in the concept of empiricism. But Sargon of Akkad, and he does this, he has now asserted that there is a conspiracy to groom, again, a misappropriation of that term, young children into being trans. He provides no evidence of this. He rejects evidence to the contrary. And then he says, everybody involved in the trans issue is highly ideological. You can't trust what they produce. Meaning that there is no evidence that would sort of assuage him. He's an SJW, essentially. He's a, a person who very fiercely and emotionally believes, you know, a uh, very strong conviction to his values. And he'll scream and he'll throw his arms around. But at the end of the day, the the reason you can't really get through to this person uh, is because they don't believe in the concept of empiricism. They don't believe really in being rational. Um, and with that, James, I understand this may be a little bit sort of, um, uh, you know, unconventional. I'm totally okay ending the topic right there. I provided sources to back my claim. I don't see any counter sources or even <laughs> arguments in favor of them. And Carl, if you want to have like a last word and then we can get to questions, that's fine. But uh, if you if you want to shit sling, <laughs> yeah, okay, if will, you, if you just, just to say, if you want uh, to shit sling, oh. just come on my channel. We can throw aside the debate format uh, we, we can, can talk about our day. Day. Yeah, yeah. we can just laugh uh, yeah, and yeah, laugh and laugh but when i, I come I in for like a formalized Let's... debate with the moderator i like it when my opponent believes in the concept of evidence so go ahead we'll right. give 
I, I, I'm, I'm sure you do. Uh, right. So I I would say to anyone listening, uh, take what Vosh has said about me and see if it applies to him. For example, ask yourself, why did he choose the first Google search for a poll that agreed with him? Is it, ah, well, this poll agrees with me. End of conversation. There we go. I've got two polls that don't agree with him, but why are they not relevant? So it's Vosh is doing exactly the same thing he's accusing me of doing. I'm not saying, I've never, I don't think there's a conspiracy, so Vosh is lying. Um, however, he knows that it sounds like it's a smear. It sounds bad. Oh, oh, a conspiracy. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm not saying there's a conspiracy. There's a movement. It's an active cultural movement. They're very open about this. They, they have websites and advocates and, and legal uh, representation. And, you know, this is this is a movement. It's not a conspiracy. There's no need for any of this to be hidden. It's all being done in, open, in, in the open. Um, the, the problem that Vosh doesn't seem to understand and in thinking that he can apply appeal simply to the science, uh, A, the, the science isn't settled on this issue. Like I keep saying, uh, that's the problem. We are, we are still unsure of what the long-term consequences of all this is because it's all so new. And there seem to be some very bad long-term consequences, uh, which I think probably helps to account for the 40% suicide attempt rate in the trans community. So I think that being cavalier about this and shouting down people and misrepresenting them and trying to describe them as essentially evil, which is what Vorsch has done, is exactly the kind of problem I'm talking about. It's exactly why I would use the term grooming, because this can be, I mean, I, I can emotionally resist this because I know how much of a joke Vorsch's opinions on these are, but a young person might not and might be intimidated into it, especially if it's not just one person doing it. Um, Everything and everyone is ideological if the radical left is to be believed on in any way. And to be honest with you, I think on that point they are correct. Um, I remember back when I first started not really understanding that point, and it, is, it has been through long study that I've come to realize that they are correct, that everyone is in some way ideological. To say that they're not means that they just don't recognize how they are ideological. Um, these, these studies, undoubtedly, I would have to go through. I don't know they're all wrong. I didn't say they're all ideologue. However, I think a lot of them are. And the ones that are are actually quite intimidating to the ones that aren't. I don't have the link up because I didn't think I'd need it. But um, there was an article on The Guardian uh, yesterday, I believe it was, that was specifically talking about an academic who was getting her work shut down because it was she was just researching into trans issues. And she was finding answers that the trans uh, community online didn't like and uh, various various put, put, points of pressure were being put on the faculty and establishment she worked for. Um, so yeah, I think there is, there is actually uh, a kind of, I, you could probably argue is it too strong, but I think in effect it amounts to it in at least some of the cases. And because of the seriousness of this as a topic, I don't think any of the cases should amount to grooming. But then I don't think that any of the workers in our country should be exploited through mass immigration. So, uh, yours. Gotcha. Thanks yeah. so much. Um, yeah, just if anyone's curious why he talks like that, you would have to, Let's too, see. if you didn't have any evidence just to so back up your claims. so we don't have to. Hold on one sec. Just to go into the Q&A before there are any more... Long, uh, before long there's any rents. more conversation. Yes. All right, so here we go. Thanks so much, everybody, for your questions. Very excited to read these. Next up, let's see. I'm going to try to read these okay. and try to uh, make sure I understand them as best as possible. Let's see. Steven Steen, thanks for your super chat. It says, we appreciate your donation to Trump 2020, Vosh. He's a uh, joker. Uh, 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 you, you got me again, you, you sneaky bugger. I didn't actually donate to Trump 2020. Oh, you'll, you'll get my chat next time. Gotcha. Thanks so much. For saddest John, <laughs> question to Sargon. Do you support the pers personal ownership of nuclear weapons? <laughs> that's a that's an excellent question um uh no i th i think that some things can and should probably be regulated weak next up i know right no mcnukes for me um uh, but thankfully with 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 nuclear weapons i think it's highly unlikely that private individuals will really be able to get them but even even if they somehow could it's probably best that we just don't gotcha thanks so much let's see Mothra J. Disco, thanks so much for your question. They asked, Sargon, would you join? I don't know what 
I think this is something to do with North Korea, if I remember. Would you join Jush Gang? Ah. Bless the commune. See, my fans uh, have gotten to that. Jush Gang, left, bless the commune. I'm, I'm not, I'm not familiar with that term. I'm afraid. Uh, if, if it's anything like Nazbol, um, possibly. When liberalism fails, that's where I'll go. <laughs> gotcha. Thanks so much, Adam. We Frieda, know thanks, Carl. Thanks for your question, Adam. Friended. Uh, Any compelling points. <laughs> The, he says, the only people who want to start worker co-ops are people you would never want to work with. I think that's for you, Vosh. I'd say that's fairly <laughs> countered by the data that A, worker co-ops have a tendency to more, be more resilient to market fluctuation and price shocks, meaning that they are very good at weathering um, unfavorable business conditions, and B, that they have a higher average level of worker satisfaction within those who work there. So it's good. That's a good shot. A little pop there. Uh, but once again, oof, the, the studies disagree. Uh, but but that's okay. You know, Maybe, maybe one day evidence what, will be against me. Why is it that people don't just work at worker cops if they're so great? Darn. Well, if only we had a chance to go into the institutional barriers to the formation of worker co-ops. Funny, funny thing, though. Did you know that there were small attempts at forming private businesses back during the feudalism days that were constantly being squashed by the monarchy? Why, then, did more serfs not go ahead and participate that's in those? Such a, that's, that's totally untrue. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, I'm sorry. Wait. Why? Are why, you saying what I just said the, was incorrect? The, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. But I, I'd like to ask you a really? question about the formation. Yeah, you, you don't. Uh, but the formation of worker cops. What's the institutional barrier to that? I want to know. Sure. Uh, okay, so the first one is ideological. Um, that would be people like you, um, who misrepresent right. data, who right. convince people uh, uh, that, um, that that <laughs> private ownership is sort of the way forward. Um, there are the ideological arguments against the salience of collective ownership. That's the biggest hurdle. you got to convince right. people that an idea is right before they'll back it. This has been the case for every political paradigm shift. Well, that is the only hurdle, isn't it? Really? No. There are institutional hurdles as well. Banks are much less likely to loan out to worker co-ops in spite of the fact right. that they're actually more likely to survive the first three years of business than traditionally managed firms um, because there is a broader preconception that worker co-ops are less effective than privately owned firms, which doesn't seem to be the case through the data. So that's an ideological okay, so hang, and hang on, hang on, hang on, hang empirical hang on, barrier. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Why don't you take the time to go through the data before data. asking me questions? I can't because educate I'm not you an over advocate the from, I'm not an advocate for this. So, you are the one who's here to educate people and worker co-ops. It's your We're position. in the Q&A segment, the Carl. Have to, to this data? I do want to... Hit me up in my live journal. Tweeted me. That's the question. No, I don't have a Twitter account. What 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 is the reason that banks don't have this data? Like why why don't they care about the data? Because if a, the, if a worker co-op is more guaranteed are, to give a return, because are bank, they literally well, ideologically predisposed to hate communists? Because bank lenders well, that, don't have all of this data in front of them, and bank owners don't want worker co-ops to be more popular. It's against their ideological interests. Given that the right, original so they've all got, hang on, was, so they've all got a shared I, I'm, I'm deferring to James here. I don't know I why we're that, going off on this. This just, is Q and A. Just to try to get through as many questions as we can. I think the original yeah. one from Adam was for Vosh, so we'll jump to the next one. Oliver Catwell, thanks so much for your question. Actually, wait, we, we do have one. Nestle twenty, really relevant. Uh, so this is for Sargon this time. It says regarding your mm -hmm. argument, quote: If worker co-ops are so great, why isn't it the dominant system? Uh, they said, I'm, I'm the UK IP was so great, why isn't it the dominant UK party? See the fallacy now. That's what their they had said. No, that's not the same. Uh, <laughs> it's an economic model that we're talking about, right? And it's an economic model that follows market forces. It's not a political party that's looking for votes. Um, and if it is more economically stable uh, and can work, whether negative outcomes and negative, uh, you know, market fluctuations, whatever happens, uh, more more reliably than the alternatives, then what would be the argument against it? You know, it's it's like saying, well, women, what well, what the gender pay gap? Women get paid less than men. Well, why why does anyone ever hire a man? You know, why would you? Gotcha. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Next up, we have Oliver Catwell. Thanks for your question. They said, I work with the mentally ill. Socialism would help their housing. Capitalism drives better medicines, which they can't afford. How can we fix this? I, I mean, I take a good shot at that. There's no denying that private firms have done a ton of work producing pharmaceuticals. But one of the reasons why pharmaceutical costs are so high in this country is because the government and insurance agencies don't negotiate their prices down. There's no reason for the insurance agencies to because they benefit because if people can't pay the upfront costs, then they have to be insured. 
And likewise, you know, the government doesn't because meddling and uh, private capture and what have you. Um, the Both solutions, both problems can be solved by unifying the interests of those who are in power with the interests of the population of this country. Working to implement market socialism would go a long way towards aligning the production of our pharmaceutical industries with the needs of our broader population because they would no longer be able to, uh, uh, you know, collaborate with our um, elected officials to uh, uh, make it so that we can't negotiate drug prices and what have you. Also, a lot of medical research is done in universities, which is which is publicly funded. So there's already like a pretty heavy public element to that uh, stuff. Sorry, didn't mean to ramble. No problem, Hamel. Thanks so much. Uh, just to, just to add to that, I I do I do think though there is. I mean, I'm I'm not a huge proponent of uh, private healthcare. Actually, I'm a liberal, not a libertarian. Um, you you know, I don't think it's unacceptable or anything. But they they do make the argument that it will slow down innovation and it will slow down the rate of uh, cures, frankly. And I think there probably is some merit to that. Um, I think it's just something to be aware of. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Next up, appreciate your question from, uh, let's see. Let's... Bryce Nance, thanks for your question. They said, Zuck might have consent, but not informed consent. So I think they're talking about Zuckerberg and Facebook. That's true. So Zuck is fucking fucking America over. Not even getting proper, uh, not even getting proper consent. The feels. Let's give Carl a chance. Well, it, how how are you defining it? Oh, me or the question asker? What, what what does informed consent look like for someone using Facebook? Gotcha. Thanks so much. Okay. Next up, appreciate it. Let's see. Mothra J. Disco got a critic here. They say Migration Watch is a fascist site, Sargon. So if you want to give a, a Migration defense Watch of Migration Watch is not a fascist site. It, it is not a fascist site. That's ridiculous. Thanks so much. General Balsack. That's the real name, by the way. Okay, thanks so much. We appreciate your question. <laughs> you say, why, Vosh, why do we not see more co-ops being formed in the U.S. if it's a better model? Just because something is a better model doesn't mean that it is A, a better model for everyone, nor does it B, mean the people in power want to implement it, nor does it C, mean that the best model will automatically be imp uh, implemented. I think that capitalism is better than feudalism. It took quite a bit for capitalism to come about, even though the material conditions that which that, that, that allow for capitalism were present many hundreds of years ago. It took a little bit for it to get off the ground. Uh, the idea that better systems just automatically win is, 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 is ridiculous. Slavery is bad. I think most of us watching would probably agree with that. You'll find that slavery was in existence for most of human history. I think most people here would agree, maybe maybe now I'm reaching a little bit, that women should be able to vote. That was not the case for a long time. I don't know how many of you believe businesses should be able to discriminate against black people, but whew, my parents um, were, you know, just about around back when, back when that was legal. Just because something is good doesn't mean it just happens. You have to fight tirelessly for what you believe is right every day of your life until you die. And that is what it means to be human. Gotcha. Let's see. Can I, uh, what, what, was the, what was the first point you made? Just because something's better doesn't mean it's not adopted, was it? No. So that was interesting. If, if something's more effective, and I think you're conflating moral good and practical efficiency there, uh, but if something's more effective, how would it not simply become the norm? It, was, it would have been more effective for businesses to accept black patronage in most um, firms, uh, but for 70 years after the abolition of slavery, most businesses didn't accept black money, even though that would have empirically led. Hang on, hang on. That, that, didn't, didn't you, the government actually implemented Jim Crow laws, didn't it? The, the business, no, Jim Crow law meant that a business had the right to refuse service, not that like businesses were forced to not allow black people in. I'll have to look that up. I've heard I've heard differently, uh, but sorry, Karen. Gotcha. Thanks so much, Rugal Migdal. Thanks for your super chat. They said the English are an ethnic group forged in Britain by the confluence of indigenous Celts and invading Germanics. Yes. Thanks. I had a feeling I was saying that wrong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. Appreciate yeah, it. That's uh, a correct statement. Trans. Uh, trans. Eth Ethnocism is not a thing, Vosh. Um, I don't know what trans ethnocism means. I'm part Irish. 
uh, Polish, German, and very minor sliver of me is English. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what that means. I mean, my, if people ask me my, like, like my nationality, I say American ethnicity. I usually default to Polish because that's 50% my ethnic identity. Um, what if I didn't have a majority? What if I had a kid and that kid was like 33% Polish, 24%. What if it's split between two? What if it's a 50, 50 mix of Korean, Pol like, I, like, I don't, the, this, that's this, why it's based on self identification well no <laughs> yes well, it's what that's what every sense is what do you feel like and then people fill out maybe you can identify as an ethnicity but that doesn't mean you're identifying as that culture it just means you're identifying as that ethnicity culture is a part of ethnicity it's a sub no sub, no 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 because no. ethnicity is a component in many now. cases of a person's heritage culture is literally it's there's nothing genetic whatsoever about culture if i look but, at a korean your person your culture is part of your heritage though a you, you inherit your culture you don't in, the, you don't the, inherit the ethnic, culture ethnic group you live in culture is where how can you not you adopt the culture of what? whatever environment you grow up in it's a form of inheritance yeah you from your it. environment not you from your, not from your, your ancestors your, you, yeah, but if your environment is your 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 direct ancestors, your parents, your grandparents. If that was if that was the, the case, then if that was the case, then there would be no American case. identity. But yet, in there, spite of the fact, <laughs> in spite of the fact that there are Korean people and Irish people and Persian people and all sorts of people in my hometown of Beverly Hills, they all act pretty pretty much exactly the same. It's all the same culture, really. A culture, lot of it's very vapid and vain. Um, but it's it's That's it's amazing. It's the same culture. Um, the idea that, like, because you have Korean parents, that means you're automatically inducted into, like, Korean culture. This is, this is ethnic, <laughs> this is ethnic essentialism, which is, again, inherent to okay. the ideology of ethnostaters and white nationalists. So, okay, but, so whose culture do they inherit? I want to give, uh, yeah, Ross we are in the Q, and I don't know why you keep jumping on my answers. Yeah, but these are important questions. The culture, you don't inherit culture, things? you get it from your environment. Yeah, but that that's an inheritance. Okay, that's so here's a quick, quick question, then we can end this. Quick question, then we can end this, okay? If you're born this, if you're born to great. two parents, okay, and they're Korean, okay, and you're a little Korean yeah. baby in Korea, and then you get it's schlepped off. It's just a coincidence off. they turn out to be Korean. N ethnically, no. But then they get schlepped well, off into the Pacific. Culturally can you, as well, Carl, no. Carl, 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 I'm not done. Then they get thrown off into the ocean. Much? Carl, you actually can't control yourself. They get thrown off into the ocean. No. The baby floats across the Pacific. They get raised in Los Angeles. What do you think their culture is going to be? But they weren't raised by Koreans, were they? No, but they are ethnically Korean. Well, no, they're racially Korean. No. Uh, okay, what, what, all right, never mind. I can't, I can't definition a racial circle. Korean, what I want to do is, I, I want to give uh, Vash the last word. Yeah, but that's the difference, <laughs> that's, that, that's the point. Like, we're not talking about race, we are talking about ethnicity, which is culture and beliefs and values and heritage and history. And or it's, a, it's a bunch of things wrapped up and you want to reduce it down to, and as soon as I say, but that's not race, oh, now none of it makes sense. You know, you, you, you're being dishonest, Vosh. Yeah. Give you a chance to respond, Vosh, just I, because the question was originally for you and then we got to go to the next question. I just, the viewers can Google the difference between race, ethnicity, and culture if they like. I don't know. What's it's honestly astonishing to me is that Carl's kept the grift going for this long. But yeah, like I'm not a white nationalist. It's I okay think not to understand. Ethnic, ethnic identification is, um, is, is usually something that you sort of, it's your heritage, but it doesn't directly infer upon your culture. There are literally hundreds of millions of people in America who would identify ethnically with something other than American. And um, they are nonetheless bound to American culture with not a trace of their original culture left to modify their behavior apart from so whatever trace bits you get through, you know, sort of assimilation and, and, and uh, uh, you know, um, just broader culture that disseminates. Um, no. but, but that's okay. Simple definition problem. I'm sure he'll fix it eventually. Rumpley de Pew. So that's Thanks. only because you're the one country <laughs> of the gotta, Enlightenment that succeeded. Just to try to give, just because the uh, question originally used for ad, our... Uh, Vosh, and then Rumpley Depew, thanks for your question. They said, when you take questions, can you ask each one if they would be okay with voluntary worker co-ops for those who want worker ownership, as opposed to government enforced on government enforcement on all businesses or businesses of a certain size? That was a mouthful. I can read it again if you like. No, no, I, I got it. Uh, yeah, of yeah, course. I got I'm... it. I... Oh, no, you go for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I think that's absolutely fine. I like. 
uh, uh, yeah, voluntary association is no question at all. And the, the this is, I think, honestly, I think it's the reason why Vorsch has to make up conspiracy theories about the beliefs, the universal beliefs of bankers to explain the uh, lack of proliferation of worker cops. But I think, it's, I think it's a fine thing that these different kinds of things exist. I just don't think they should necessarily be imposed on people who haven't actually done anything illegal. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Next up, appreciate your question. Oh, from... I didn't. I didn't get an answer there. Um, I just. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead. Oh, no worries. I just want to say, of course, I would be fine with the voluntary implementation of this. I think it's funny that Carl would accuse me of engaging in conspiracy theories, given the context of the debate that we just had. Um, but with that being said, um, I do think that it is a step forward broadly the implementation of worker co-ops, and there have been many um, uh, uh, sort of steps forward that have to be implemented through policy. Of course, I'm in favor of sort of the the voluntary argument as it can be done, but there are ideological and 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 financial barriers that I think need to be addressed in a top down perspective. Uh, after, of course, very very heavy grassroots advocacy, that would you know we we need to convince people this is a good idea. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Stealth Creations, thanks for your super chat as well. They said, should we not be free to dismiss the evidence on San Francisco when they and other California cities prescribe passing as merely a misdemeanor instead jailable crime? Pa per Sorry, say that again. What was the misdemeanor? Part of that? To read it exactly as they wrote it, they said, should we not be free to dismiss the evidence on Maybe uh, so SF when they and other California cities prescribe passing as merely a misdemeanor instead of jailable crime. I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's pretty irrational to dismiss studies because they came out of, I mean, to dismiss studies because they came out of cities that have a law or ordinance you dislike. But, I, but I'll admit I'm a little lost on this one. I'm swimming well, in I, a I, deep I, ocean. I, I, I agree with Vosch that it is irrational to dismiss things just because you don't like them. I think that the left has a, a big smack in the face from his statement there. Gotcha. Let's see. Thanks so much. Next up, Rumpley Depew. Thanks for your question. They said, can you ask them why they think that trans people's dysmorphia and dysphoria are affirmed while others, such as anorexic people, have similar body image symptoms but are not supported is this ideologically I'll take this, driven if that's all right yeah i think it, we'll both, it, it, i think it, i'll have to correct you when you're done but yeah go uh, for it i'm i'm sure you think you will um the the lack of affirmation uh comes from the empirical observation of the damage that the thing does uh the the radical left at the moment the sort of woke progressive types oh they're they're, they're against body shame they're all for you being as uh, anorexic or fat as you choose to be wow. they, they think that any kind of coercion in this regard any kind of uh, suggestion in this card regard is coercion and uh, you should be fat phobic bigot check your thin privilege okay so he just wanted to do like he just wanted to pretend it was 2014 again and go through the <laughs> anti hgw <laughs> talking <laughs> points <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, in regards to an actual answer to that question, um, it's true. We do have to look at the empirical consequences of supporting both of these. A talking contrary, point is still an answer. Contrary to what? Huh? Go ahead. Carry on. Okay. Contrary to um, contrary to uh, what C Carl said here, uh, I don't lefties don't promote anorexia. Um, usually, anorexia and other forms of body dysmorphia, non-gender dysmorphia, are a product of uh, social beauty standards that are most heavily critiqued by the feminist movement. There's the body positivity movement. Some people say the body positivity movement doesn't go too far or far enough or whatever. But the reason why is because if you tell an anorexic person what an anorexic person believes, which and I'm I'm sorry, I haven't had anorexia. I'm not trying to be like glib here but i imagine that anorexic people if you encourage them and don't challenge them you lead them down less healthy roads i, I can say that sort of you know obliquely whereas with regards to trans people medical treatment for trans people and social transition for trans people have overwhelmingly positive effects on outcomes for them drastically decreases depression drastically decreases suicide attempts drastically decreases anxiety just makes things infinitely better for them so that's why you know ultimately with medicine do no harm uh transitioning trans people is good helps them uh encouraging anorexic people that they're not skinny enough i guess is the implication does not help them gotcha 
uh, let's see. We do have a clarification. Thanks, Stealth Creations, on that last question. As not, what they meant to say was, I think this is interesting. That's why I'm going back to it. Mm-hmm. So they said, should we not be free to dismiss the evidence on San Francisco when they and other California cities prescribe passing AIDS as merely a misdemeanor <laughs> instead of a jailable crime? Yeah. Okay. I have the. Okay. So the only reason they did that, and I've gone over this exact thing for, for so for one yes dismissing studies because they came out of people who happened to work in a, in a state that passed a given law this is incredibly irrational but the reason why they did that is to bring the penalty for um passing aids along knowingly down to uh the level that it is at for other stis and the reason they wanted that is because studies found we like our empiricism over here studies found that the felony charge for uh, knowingly passing on AIDS or HIV was discouraging people who felt they might have AIDS or HIV from getting tested. Because if you're tested and you know you have it, then spreading it is deliberate, which is a felony crime. Whereas if you don't know you have it, if you don't have that piece of paper letting you know that you have HIV or AIDS, then you just spreading it around, it doesn't have any legal consequences. Bringing it down to a misdemeanor was a way of increasing the number of people who would get STI tests. And it's since its implementation has been effective in reducing the spread of AIDS in the state of California. That's the reason why. Gotcha. Thanks so much. You can respond so, if you want, Carl. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll just chalk Vosh up on the it's okay to give someone AIDS uh, bandwagon. Uh, next. Next. Uh, Mike. Oh, God, that was a funny joke. Sorry. Right. Come I, come I, I can't fine. tell with you, Carl, because half the shit on, you say is it. Uh, um, okay. Next, Maybe make uh, it dumber next time so I can distinguish the. Next I uh, appreciate it. You guys, you guys have got I'll do my best to tone it down, Bosh. Old buddies. Um, Mike Hillier, thanks for your question. They said there was a study about rapid onset dysphoria that was removed because it would upset people, not because it was wrong or flawed. That's why you should question it. No, no, I have yep. the data on this as well. The study on rapid onset dysphoria used horrible data that was collected here. I have this on my document under studies to watch out for, but that's okay. That's why I wrote the document. I'm happy to have it. So studies- How do you know they're referring to the same study? Uh, because here, because this is the one that termed rapid onset gender dysphoria. I have it right in front of me. So this is commonly cited by people to indicate that transness spreads socially and that exposure to trans material might encourage young people to be trans, but this is not legitimate data. The study polled parents, not the actual children, and those polls were taken online and those sites were biased from places like Fourth Wave Now, Transgender Trend, and Youth Trans Critical Professionals. Um, whatever your opinion of these sites may be, this is illegitimate data collection that does not reflect any biological reality. Right. Let's... But we don't know, do we? No, we so do. No, this is this this wouldn't pass a high school book report. This is this is not legitimate. Okay. And I can I'm go sure, over I'm sure, it. I'm sure you've been honest about the research. I can, I right. literally have the the academic training to go over this and show you where the methodology fails to prove the point they were intending to prove. I, I have a, a data collection as one of the things I studied. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Stupid whore energy, as she likes to call herself. Very sick. She says there is a structure in the forebrain in trans women known to be important to sexual behavior that is closer to that of cisgender women than cisgender men. How is that for godly evidence? <laughs> there is kind of like the pink brain, blue brain argument, is there? I, I, I tend to argue gender being an identity thing. So even if so that affirms the validity of sort of the, um, the 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 gender dysphoria argument, like trans women or women, even like there's a biological predilection towards that. I say there's an identity component too, but I but I still agree with that. I still agree with that. The pink brain, the pink pink brain, blue brain stuff. It's still good, you know. There's a lot of variability in sex. It's a it's a really murky topic. Really interesting gotcha. stuff. Sorry. Thanks so much. Rebel. No problem, Aurora. Thanks so do, much. Do you say you're you're on the. Tri- Hang on, did you say you're on the trans women uh, bandwagon? That that trans. Did I did I say trans I men or women? I women that trans women. Trans are, women are women. Uh, women if I, yeah, trans women are women. If right? I if I stumbled over my words there, then I apologize. Yeah, obviously. Trans no, no, I think it was my glitching. I don't think it was you. Okay, okay, yeah. You just, you agree with the statement, right? Well, I think trans women are women, of course. Right. 
So if you were going to settle down and start a family, you wouldn't distinguish between someone who is biologically female and had transitioned to be a woman. Of course I would. Trans women and cis women are different, just like tall women and, and short women are. Mm -hmm. I think that's absolutely something I should distinguish, mm -hmm. especially if I wanted to have a kid, I probably wouldn't settle down with a trans woman. Um, but there's still women, like there oh, okay. are cis women who can't give kids, so, you know. Gotcha. They're just uh, not 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 quite like cis women. There is a difference. We agree. Right? There, yes, there is. Tall women, short women, black women, white women, shaved women, uh, bushy. Yeah, but you're bringing you're bringing in the irrelevant categories now. Tall women and short women can still have children. So I don't think that. So what? I don't think. Yeah, and there are cis women who can't have children. That's not the only category. You can't just arbitrarily decide mm. there's one valid category for what womanhood means, and then like leave all the other ones at the door. There are thousands of adjectives that? that you could use to distinguish between women, but they're all women, all the same. Gosh, I think so. Well, much. they're not all the same. Then that's the point, isn't it? Well, they're all they're women, all the, all the same. Like they're all women, the same, in spite of those differences. You know, unless there, the, um, there, there are genuine differences that you need to account for. So yes, I agree. Just... There are differences between different women. They're just still women. I, I want to. <laughs> okay. Just, yeah. Uh, sorry. Sister Frito Sarabia, thanks for your question. They said if someone is allowed to identify against their birth certificate regarding gender, they said, why can't a twenty-year-old identify as seventy? And what's keeping me from getting SSI if it's who I am? I I assume Carl has a lovely answer for this one. If you want to take it, no, this I one's do. for you. This okay. one's for you. Well, first of all, there you can transition to seventy. Everyone does eventually. <laughs> um, no, okay. That's not an honest answer. No, of course, no, of course. Okay, yes, that was a joke, Carl. <laughs> now. Obviously, the reason why is that A, there is a massive body of evidence to affirm the legitimacy of transgender people, whereas there is not for trans age people. Uh, if there was some massive sort of overwhelming scientific consensus indicating there are people who experience high levels of suicidality and anxiety and depression because they're upset they're not like the age they think they are, then I guess we could look into it. I mean, I'm interested in seeing where the data goes. But right now, just as a matter of empiricism, we have to follow the problems that actually seem to exist. There are a few people out there who probably sincerely do believe they're like a six-year-old girl on the inside or something. And there have been people like this for all time, but there has not been a plurality of data on them the same way there has been for trans I thought people. you didn't care about feeling things. Well, when we're talking about things like suicidality, the feelings of the people affected are literally the things we're trying to address. That's what medical science same, is. Same with identity and immigration, in fact. These are incomparable examples, but I appreciate your attempt to bring it okay. back and make it seem like you weren't fucking demolished on every point you brought up earlier. <laughs> you know I up. wasn't for Next up, the atheist brony. Thanks for your question. <laughs> they said, Sargon did ending slavery and property rights. Ooh. No. Damn. Thought we had him. Gosh, yep. Thank <laughs> you so much. Comrade. The, the arg I will say the argument's legitimate, though. The I can't explain why to Sargon, but the argument is legitimate. No. Let's see. Comrade why, Courtney. Why can't you explain why? <laughs> because we're in the QA. And because it's you. The the problem with slavery is it's a violation of someone else's property rights you own yourself someone else doesn't own you okay gotcha thanks so much i hopefully everybody heard that as it was I, a I, I robot like on my end okay gotcha uh, well, sorry my my thing cut out that's i i heard i heard so i assumed the audience heard or at least through my so, stream they did i could make it you, out so can you hear me yeah. Now, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, I uh, the the problem with slavery it's a violation of property rights. You own yourself. No one else owns you. That's the problem. With Got. Uh, I think it might have been robot. <laughs> Make sure the next question's yeah. to me. <laughs> next, we're yeah, good. Sorry. Let's see. Let me know, folks, if you oh, didn't hear that from Carl. We can go back to that can question. You? Yes. Okay, yeah. It looks like they heard you, Carl. Really, I got really, I saw somebody in the live chat. We heard the last right, thing okay, you, you said. Yeah. Great, yeah. Thanks so much, so, folks. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with my connection. I'm really sorry. No worries. It's all right. Comrade Courtney, thanks for your question. She said, Sargon, how do you feel about the Hibernian question? Mm. Mm. The Hibernian question? Mm. Uh, I feel like I said this wrong, too. <laughs> no, no, you, you no, no, nailed no, I, it. <laughs> he doesn't what, know. What, what's, what, no, I, I, I don't know. What's the? I, I'm always for a strange-sounding question. 
Still, oh, Hibernian. What's the Hibernian quest? It's, it's it's the idea that a that a small um uh, a small but extremely wealthy and prominent ethnic group has infiltrated the upper echelon of our society, politics, economy, pornography, and that they're using their in group <laughs> bias to enact revenge against the uh, against the Anglo Saxons. I'm not surprised a leftist would ask that question. Gotcha, thanks so much. Let's see, we got one from Asu Asu. Thanks for your question. They said, uh, let's see. They uh, to quote them verbatim, to Soygon and SJV Vosh, will you stop the what I don't know exactly. I you know I know what Soygon means. What does SJV yeah. Vosh mean? I assume I it's, it's like SJ insult. like SJW because the two V's next to each other. Like so like SJW Vosh, basically. Oh gotcha. Okay. So <laughs> thanks so much. Uh Thanks for letting me needle you guys. Uh, they said, will you stop the matriarchal hell state of family courts and in what way will you replace them? I, I, you want to take this? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, honestly, Vosch, I think you'll probably agree with me on this one. Um, I'm, I'm just going to use the example of Britain because I'm more familiar with it, but it's basically the same in America too, as far as I'm aware. Um, essentially, family courts are actually really patriarchal. Um, there's just the automatic assumption that the woman is the better caregiver and the man, the man uh, is not. And men have to work very, very hard in order to be able to see their children, which is, not a, is anti-feminist, uh, in my opinion, and in the opinion of many feminists as well. So it's one of those, one of those rare occasions that me and the feminists agree on something. But, um, but it, it's, it's born from the idea that men and women actually should be equal partners in parenting. Uh, but the the British state particularly is actually really guilty of this. It's really patriarchal because you get some you know some boomer fucking judge who uh, who you know just has this really ingrained uh, patrimony, uh, sort of um, patronizing fatherly attitude, and assuming the son is the instigator and the woman is the victim on every case and it's it's not fair you know it's not you don't have to be any one particular ideology to to see that this is not equality uh yeah i i disagree with his flagrant use of the n-word but apart from that i completely agree with uh what N -word? That's, 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 <laughs> no no but but no 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 i i yeah i completely agree yeah 100 percent. i think yeah almost everyone agrees on that one it is a holdover generally i think the sort of emotional um baggage that we have regarding women uh and against men is definitely influencing and it's it's unfair yeah it's pre it's pretty it's pretty fucked up yeah i i know i personally have a friend who was um i personally have a friend who was a father he's like a young father and uh, he he went to the park with his kid, and he was accused of like being like one of the mums was like up up at him, like, thought she was like preying on kids or whatever, and he was just there with his kid, you know. Yeah, so, yeah I, I think it's pretty yeah, yeah, up. yeah, 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 yeah. And, and and it's nice that everyone can at least agree on that because I've I've met so many men whose lives have been destroyed by family courts, destroyed, you know. And this I I think that contributes to the male suicide rate, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If if I had to if I had to point it to one particular thing that I think was the thing we should address. It's that. I think that'll help reduce male suicide. You bet. Thanks so much. Noah Watson, thanks for your question. For Vosh, what do those economists for migration tend to think about forcing every company to be a co-op? The economists who argue in favor of immigration? Uh, I, don't, I don't think the economists that talk about that typically talk about the co-ops co-ops are actually a very understudied subject in 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 economics um i economics is one of my weaker subjects i have some phds in my community who i talk to to try and like shore up my knowledge on this um most of our knowledge on worker co-ops comes from sort of uh, uh sort of just like longitudinal studies of the few that exist in a given place i've got some in america i've got some in Armachina, or argentina um but we don't have like this really big like basis of theory there might be a few more in non-english languages that just haven't been translated because the mondragon corporation which is a worker co-op comes from spain and it's huge um so it's probable that their success has spawned some economic discourse that i can't read um but it's something i want to look more into definitely yeah gotcha we do have maybe an old buddy of yours uh sargon uh question from 
Oh, a super chat from Hunter Avalone. Maybe he's calling hey. you out, Sargod. If he, if you want, if you guys, oh, no, uh, no. <laughs> so I mean, uh, let's see. Yeah. I, this, I'm making an exception for this because it's just so juicy. People, you know, and I know Carl, you can take it. He says, Sargon, what is it like being so stupid and slippery? If you want to respond, you can, Carl. It's nice that he's finally joined the left. You got it. Thanks so much. You appreciate it. Sophie M. <laughs> Let's see. Appreciate your question. Uh, Sophie, she's coming at you too, Carl. She says, Sargon, the study, he, they quote you, they say uh, to quote that the studies are ideologically motivated is a weak excuse not to engage with the research. Did you know that 99%? I'm not. And then they uh, um. asked, did you know that 99% of the trans people at any age do not regret transitioning? Give you a chance to respond, of course. I I want to answer that data, and I would I would definitely like to see studies being uh, done by people who don't have a vested interest in this subject. Uh, it's just a fact. It, it, the, there's a huge amount of ideological bias surrounding this uh, this topic, and I don't think that the the majority, well, not necessarily the majority, but just I I don't think we can just take any one thing on face value. I mean, it's all it's. It's terribly involving for the people who it is about, and I don't trust their judgment uh, specifically, to be honest. I, like I'm saying, I'm not saying they're all bad or good or anything like that, but uh, I'm not just going to accept some rando study from California on the face of it. Uh, you know, you got ultimately any the only per, the only reason anyone ever presents a study of anything is because it supports their views. That's it. Um, so just make sure to supply data that agrees with Carl, and he'll investigate it. Yeah, but you only supply data that agrees with you. Look at my immigration poll. But you don't I've have got any two immigration polls data. that disagree. But yes, I do. I've got two. You fool. No, no, I was. You speaking... have won the first Google result. It, what, for one, and it yet wasn't... you cherry pick this to say, "Oh well, there we go. That's my point proved," and you're still standing on it. For one, I'll have you it's know nonsense. that I would never deign to Google during a debate. My chat provided me that link. For two, it's oh, more that's up very to date. good of them. It's still the first Google result. It's more up to date than the other two polls you cited for three one of the polls you cited didn't ask it's the question one poll of a thousand well, 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 people didn't ask the question that you were looking to answer the question was do we want to change immigration law one of those polls was do you think there are too many immigrants coming in those are similar yeah. but not exactly the same and, and then the next migration one, watch uk 76 percent wanted to reduce it and, and migration and watch and, 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 uk look, look, is more than a little what's biased. wrong with the data you think it's ideologically corrupted because you don't like the answer it's giving. You didn't don't even next. look for, yeah, the difference being I provided you counter evidence. You didn't that. provide any counter evidence for the trans issue. Yes, you just assumed I did. the You're study. just denying it because you don't like what it. Evidence? What evidence for the trans issue? What evidence indicates that? Migration Watch poll. I'm t wait, I just said for the trans issue. Can you keep up? No, I'm not talking about the trans issue. It's the same thing. Right. So I don't trust the evidence you're going to provide. You don't trust the evidence I'm going to provide. The difference, so the difference being really quickly, really thing. quickly, James, I just got to be this. Sure. really, really quickly. The difference being when you provided polls I didn't like, I provided another piece of evidence that agreed with me and explained my reasons why I didn't like your data. When I provided you sure evidence you on the trans really stuff reasons. that you didn't like, you just dismissed it offhand with no contrary I don't, data. I don't have time to go through There's it. just a just little so, difference there. So, small right difference, so, but know. that's okay. You know, it's, it's in the details. Just you so, know, just you so. know that you're doing the same thing. I want to give, uh, let's see, in case you want to give anything more than that pithy response carl the the door is open you can because the question was originally for you so i want to get you make sure that you have plenty of time to uh, respond and then we'll go to the next refra one. Uh, remind me the question exactly again please it was the uh did you know 99 percent of trans people at any age do not regret trans yeah i was i i don't i don't have the the data in front of me i'm not taking an assertion from a radical leftist on <laughs> doesn't even know the ideology of the person who asks just if he hears data next, he doesn't uh, like it's not uh, real data we got eric yes yeah, the thing. everyone always produces data that supports their position that's it then produce contrary thing. data next to, up, to we got attack so sorry Vosh, to stop you we gotta go okay okay stop i've got a few studies to read through we're gonna wait because Vosh wants me to produce contrary data what Oh, are we? We're going. I'm going to go and look up some studies that talk about the amount of trans and non-trans, and I'm. So the st so the specific question. Oh, he's oh he's gone, isn't he? James, maybe just ask a question that's directed at me. 
We, uh, Carl, if you can hear us, I think your connection's right. ebbing and flowing. We're going to Wake Forest. We're one. He did a Google yeah, search, and the bandwidth that. was too much for his connection. <laughs> we <laughs> <laughs> probably <laughs> you having a good sense of humor, Carl. But, uh, I don't know what the hell is going on with my connection today. It's absolutely it's okay. Nice. It's all right. No problem. Uh, but no, obviously, we, I'm not going to go and re read studies now. It's okay. That'll be for a third debate. We've got that's true. A third time's a charm, you guys. I think people really enjoy watching you guys. It's next up. We've got uh, let's see, Eric S. coming at you from a philosophical angle. Vosh, they said, how does Vosh justify his quote should statements? Because quote unquote should statements necessarily imply objective morality. I don't think they necessarily imply objective morality. I have um, epistemological axioms that I ground um, that, that that I ground in in you know. Um, uh, uh, sort of the 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 uh, foundational, you know, properly basic belief, and then from that point, you know, I make arguments that I think align with my axioms. So my basic axioms when I'm making arguments here are: we should do something because it makes people's lives better. I think most people agree fundamentally with that. Maybe we can argue about the specifics or or what it means for a person's life to be better. What does it mean to be happy versus fulfilled, or what have you? But for example, if I say we should end slavery, I'm not really implying objective morality there. I'm just kind of making an appeal to a common sense of decency, or at least that's the hope. If everyone I'm talking to believes that in, in the hierarchy and believes that slaves are of a degenerate race that need to be kept in bondage to serve their masters. And that's not, and they don't believe that like in a, in a foundation, they believe that like not in a utilitarian sense, but foundationally, I could never make an argument with these people. I just talk to people who I assume have shared values. And I believe most people, even Sargon's audience, who I imagine share many disagreements with me, fundamentally want the world to be made a better place. So that's why I think, I think it should be done because it would make the world better. That's my sort of common ground. Gotcha. Next up, uh, let's see. Can I can I just uh, just just text give you a short and pithy um, yeah, response? For, if like. Yeah, yeah. Very very quickly. Um, should statements don't require objective morality; they just require morality. Uh, you, all morality is subjective. Um, it's just one of those things. You you just it's you know your your particular moral position is what uh, it is the imperative behind the ought statement and it's up to others as to whether they agree you've got to provide a good argument thanks so much benjamin holm appreciate your question and we've got a i forgot to mention folks uh, we're going to try to close the q a so i totally we've got a good list of questions that i want like carl's actually remember he's was it i'm in colorado so it's he's got to be i think i think it's seven hours ahead of me so it was at 11 40 over there car carl it is correct. okay so, so it's, i want to make sure carl gets out of here on time he's already been here for i anticipated it being like an hour and a half so it's we've been going for a yeah. while <laughs> sorry so about that i don't know if you had like day plans or whatever I'm... has this really been two hours and 40 two and a half hours oh my god i'm i'm just um, i'm zooming over here you know so we can let you i can't believe it this is honestly it's just it's been such a good time i'm like i would have guessed it's been like an hour and 50 minutes but just to we want to close the Q&A intake just to try to get through as many of what we have and let Carl go to sleep. But Benjamin Holm, thanks for your question. He said, Sargon, if your issue regarding immigration is purely cultural, why did you bring up the oh. point that a percent of people don't identify as, quote, white British? Uh, is that for me? Yep. So you'll, you'll, have, to, you'll have to say it again. My, my bloody no connection. I wasn't even Sorry. Googling that time. No. <laughs> 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 they said sargon if your issue regarding immigration is purely cultural why did you bring up the point that a percent of people don't identify as quote white british just, that's just the category on the census i don't care about the white british bit um that, that you can I, I do actually have uh hang on a second. i do actually have a bit more in depth where they, they there are other other aspects of the census let me just get the data up here um so you've got like um, you've got ca you, you've also got the national categories. So you've got like English only identity. So those people who only identify as English um, in London, it's three million out of eight million. So most people in London consider themselves to be English. I think that's a concern. It's nothing to do with race. Gotcha. You got it. And let's see. Just to because you still got questions coming in. Uh, we appreciate yeah. it, folks. But just to. I mean, like, to kind of respect, especially for Carl uh, going to sleep on a decent time, 
Is it fair? I'm, I'm it... actually in no hurry. I'm, I'm quite a night owl, so. Okay, you bet. So we'll keep going. If they, if they, you guys just let me know if you got like something where you're like, hey, I'm starting to tire out. Give me like a five minute warning and we'll, that way we'll know like when to. You want to go just to keep a clean number. You want to go to like four or so or, or 20 minutes. I mean, I'm okay with going till four okay, specific cool. time. So another 18 minutes or so. And cool. uh, I think that's a good idea. So next up, Hobbit Spartan. Vosh, would, thanks for your question. They said, Vosh, would capitalism adopt co-ops if they weren't if they were so efficient so let me read that again i screwed that up Bosch would capitalism adopt co-ops if they were so efficient capitalism wants to make things more efficient then why have they not adopted co-ops because that efficiency has to serve the material interests of the people in power it's not enough that something be efficient after all in capitalism our lives are more or less completely controlled by um by by the the wealthy and the elite um, there, there's been studies on this that the, How? the well, Hang on, no, I can't, yeah, no, I, can't, I, can, I can, I can, I can, no, I can absurd. clarify. So yeah, there have been cool. studies shown that the, <laughs> okay, yeah. the preference for policy voting, um, of the general population and policies that actually get passed in, in the house, for example, um, there's yeah. essentially no correlation. It's, it's null. There's it's what the public wants and what happens. There's like no relationship between these things. Whereas what the wealthy want, there is a strong correlation to what laws are actually passed, like a very strong statistical correlation. I don't mean sure. that all the wealthy people are like sitting in smoky rooms with cigarettes, you know, talking about what policy to pass next under the guise of democracy. I just mean they have a lot more power than us and they have lots and they have super PACs and we don't, you know, yeah. not most of us. So for that reason, while worker co-ops may be more efficient in some respects, it's not like they blow everything else out of the water. I think they're generally better, though they may be more efficient in some respects. They're not efficient in a way that benefits the people in power. Um, that extra money doesn't go into the economy. It goes into the pockets, usually, of the workers there. And that goes into the economy sort of secondarily. But that usually goes into forms of... Um, goes in through taxes and it goes into um, sectors of the economy that don't immediately benefit the interests of the wealthy in the same way that it would for it to just be a traditionally run firm where all of the proceeds and all the revenue gets funneled up through the top before being sort of disseminated out. So that's ultimately the issue. It's not just okay, efficiency. Hang, hang on a sec, hang on a sec, hang on a sec, because that, that's not the same thing. You're saying that we are controlled by the wealthy is not they are getting their interests disproportionately served by the state. And it's not like their interests can't be bucked by the state when the demos wants it, which is what we've seen with Trump and Brexit. So it's you can't just say everyone is controlled by billionaires. Okay, when I say control, okay, when, okay, okay. To clarify, when I say controlled by, I don't literally mean like we're in bondage and there's nothing we can do. I just mean that yeah. the systems are rigged in their favor. Okay, if I'm using hyperbolic language, yeah. I apologize. No, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. I, I accept you walking that to the point where you're comfortable. Make, yeah, it's just the, the system thing, is right? rigged I, you know, I, in their favor. It is. It, it is, works it for is, them. Right, it is. Yeah, that's that's the, that's ultimately the issue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah the, the Joe Biden, Hunter Biden stuff. You know, that's, <laughs> right, yeah. right, and the and the and the Clintons and the Trumps and Epstein's suicide yeah, 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 with giant yeah, and Trump, yeah, 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 right, yeah, so on and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sort of neoliberal consensus we can call. It, I think. Um, gotcha. Thanks so much. We appreciate that. Next up, let's see. Rump. Lee DePew, thanks for your question, where they said, aren't we all afraid that Rogan is going to lead Bernie down the alt-right pipeline with his endorsement? <laughs> Bosh, I've got a question. I've got a question. Yeah, hit me. What, what yeah, do you cool. make? What What do you make of the reaction to Bernie saying, thanks, Joe? Uh, if you, I mean, if you know anything about me, you know I fucking hate like a, like a anti-pragmatic, woke, scoldy, virtue signally lefty. Right. I hate these people. Good. Joe Rogan is such a huge figure and coalition building is politics, baby. If we can, if, if yeah. Bernie can make that grasp, anyone, all the people on Twitter right now complaining, you know, they'll, they'd accept an endorsement from Kissinger before they'd accept an endorsement <laughs> from Joe Rogan. It's disgusting. Yeah, they would. I hate these they people. Would. I was really disappointed, by the way, in, um... Uh, uh, what's his name? Carlos Maza, the guy who was on the receiving end yes, of, of Stephen Crowder's Vox, harassment. Yeah, yeah. I thought I expected yeah. better of him because Vox Disagreed, does really good yeah. work. But yeah, he was he was no, they uh, don't. yeah. But yeah, he was he was spurging out all over Twitter, and it's like, why? I mean, Joe, Joe Rogan is not like a right winger, you know. He, he's not like some ideological Republican. So 
I can't believe this. So, but it's the trans issue, isn't it? It's the trans issue. That's the big one. Yeah, I think I think Joe Rogan is probably further to the left than um, than than the average American. I would say um, he's maybe oh, yeah. maybe on trans issues he's kind of at par, or maybe even further to the left. But for most issues and his like sort of vague populist like hippie attitude, I think it's further to the left than most people. I think I think that's an endorsement I'd be proud to have if I was Bernie. I think um, there's a phrase that uh, everyone's conservative about the thing they know most, and it's, I think that's true. I think that's just a true statement. Um, and I think that that's why Bernie Sanders, um, Bernie Sanders, Joe Rogan, is uh, has quite a, a, a you know, I don't want to sound unfair, but it's a very conservative view of uh, transgender uh, women to men competing in sports, uh, at least not without revealing that they are transitioned uh, because of the biological uh, nature and differences of men and women. Um, I honestly, I think that that's the issue that's going to like tank the SJW, the the radical left uh, woke brigade. They can't, you can't have men beating the crap out of women and then saying, "Well, we how do we get on this? this?" So it's fine. Oh you know? no! But sorry, yeah, can't. We, yeah, we have to. Do, Trans to people in sports is a super complicated issue that is that is often highly over sensationalized um, by by right leaning figures, but but it is Broken undeniably skull. something worth broken skull what broken what? skull wait what broken skull this is what happens uh, yeah exactly google it google wait 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 wait, 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 wait. hold on wait 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 for one that's not how data works for two athletes break their skulls all the fucking that's not time works. that's that's a never yeah, no, event a single anecdotal idiots. evidence i i still don't no, know what you're but referring that's a to. never event that's a never event. There should that's, never this, be a This time. is not how you data collect. But, whatever but, james it's, not, it's a complicated issue data. i'm making a moral you, argument Let's see. I'm making a moral argument. There is too much of a, a, a difference for and it's it's showing in the results. We can look at what's happened. A woman with a broken skull. That should have never happened. Okay. That's We've not fair. this is not how you data collect or form or form you, extrapolations you, you, to no, incredibly not, complicated social psychology psychological issues. I'm not collecting data. I'm making a moral argument. One Can sec. you understand that voice? Gotta... Okay, well, like, I don't like I'm to make broad prescriptive statements on complicated issues based on single incidences. But there James, are very simple we've gotta go, ones that you we've can. Gotta... And it's Gentlemen, I'm so sorry. Size. I'm not we sorry, James. Do it. To the next Pull one. the trigger. So you've got our father. <laughs> Pull the our trigger, father, James. Our father, like <laughs> our father in the green says, I find it odd that Vosh characterizes the woke left activism that he has in the past disagreed with, char- considers any political ambitions and institutional control that is publicly known is considered a conspiracy by him and others. Wait, what is the apparent hypocrisy I have engaged in? Yeah, let's see. So they say, I find it odd that Vosh characterizes the woke left activism okay. that he has in the past disagreed with. Okay. And then it says, consider, oh, okay, so they're saying, I find it odd that Vosh, given that, they find it odd that you consider any political ambitions and institutional control that is publicly known to be a conspiracy. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if I understand the relationship between these two things, but the reason why I don't like the wokelets on Twitter is because I think they're counterproductive. I think they have their heart in the right place. Um, I would rather have the world filled with idiots who are screaming about trans rights unproductively than I would with a bunch of fascists who disagree with them. Um, but... So, but Unproductivity is unproductivity, you know. I, I have to argue against that. I don't know what that has to do with conspiracism. The only people who I say have... Usually when I make claims of, like, broader social control, I try to avoid them being conspiratorial. Everyone agrees that wealthy people have a disproportionate amount of political power in this country. That's literally how capitalism is meant to function. Um, or or at least... It's how how all it societies function. ...does in practice. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, to different extents, of course. For example, you know, back in the feudal sure. days, is very, 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 very wealthy merchants were still lesser than lords who had a tenth of their wealth. Um, so obviously things shuffle around, but the powerful people have the power. That's, you know, that's axi- that's that's tautological. Whatever the case may be, I try to avoid making like statements of conspiracy though. And I've had to bite my tongue on this in the past too, because sometimes it feels like, oh, because sometimes like when, you, when the economic consensus is talking about like rent control, for example, this was a big one for me. Um, I w- used to be very pro-rent control and there I f- saw the these economic articles from from uh, the, the Borjas and your Heritage Foundation, your von Mises, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, and I don't want to trust that. Oh, uh, they're all capitalist ideologues. But eventually I sat down, I took a deep breath and I sat down, I engaged with the data. And no, I can't. The data agrees with them. So I moved my position over. I try to avoid 
engaging in conspiracism. It's it can it can really hamper your ability to engage like critically with media. Gotcha. Just, just out of interest, is that the same reason you find yourself siding with the Koch brothers on Open Borders? I probably the side with the Koch reason. brothers and that rape should be illegal too, but I don't really yeah, use that but, as the but, defining... But, they're, they're, but there's a real salient conversation here about the actual effect of mass immigration and the argument, and you made this argument yourself, is that, well, the economy gets bigger, but you also agree that there is a por portion Would... of the economy, a, a slice of the, de the demography of the country that actually lose money. When so, you, so I, when your I mean, I body, I don't care about the overall size. I care about the distribution. When your body is covered in leeches, the best way to deal with that problem is not to avoid eating, so they have less blood, blood to drink. It is to swat off the leeches, and that is what I advocate for. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That that is very clear. Thank you. We've got another one from our father in the green. Thanks for your question. He said, "I'm progressive. I want many progressive policies implemented, but I feel." People like Vosh stifle any good progress when he dismisses the very toxic and influential elements in the woke left. Think after Bernie. I don't, I don't dispute, I argue all the time with the toxic elements of the left. I'd like to think that I'm one of the least toxic elements. I'm pretty data driven. I try not to engage too much in like a ideological demagoguery. Um, I, I don't know. So I, I accept that there are a bunch of jackasses on Twitter who make the left look good, uh, or sorry, who don't make the left look good. Of course, I concede <laughs> that point. Um, I just, I just don't think that the existence of like crazy SJWs means that like all data and academia is being driven by a cabal of like man-hating feminists or something. I don't know. I think it's simultaneously possible to believe there are pernicious elements of the left without believing many of the arguments that are ascribed to them by the right. Gotcha. Thanks so much. Let's see. Our Father in the Green, thanks for your other uh, comment. They said, I still wait for Vosh and King Crocoduck to discuss the deeper philosophy of science uh, slash academia and woke ideology. Yeah, that's my bad. I got to get on that. I even talk with Crocoduck on Twitter. That's my fucking bad. Someone donated so much a while ago for that debate. And I really want to, too. I'm just horrible at scheduling. That's my bad. You got it. Joel Sass, thanks for your question. They said, for both, if I create a Korean baby in a test tube and raise it in a lab bereft of any human interaction, what would its culture be? Wolf. <laughs> yeah, it would be, be feral. Um, the, these, 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 these are things that have been done. Uh, they, can't, they can't talk. Uh, they don't appear to be, ever be able to talk because apparently parts of your brain only form uh, in, uh, in early life and it's required that you have human interaction for these parts of the brain to develop and if you don't have it then they don't develop and essentially you become I don't, I don't want to say retarded but that is actually the word I think <laughs> uh, the, the no but it is no no you can't yeah you can't get it back if you, you you can't get it back yeah if, if your first yeah, few and years are forever yeah you know it's stunted and it, it, it always will be and and you'll never learn to read you'll never you'll never have proper this is actually one of the things i'm more interested in than anything else as 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 a as an amateur researcher um because i talk so yeah. much about nature versus nurture if there was like some sort of there's no way to do this ethically but if we could somehow learn more about feral people like people who grew up without human interaction mm. if there was some if we could spawn yeah these people because yeah. they're very rare you know um then we could yeah. learn like so much uh, it wouldn't be ethical i'm just i'm just very curious yes. this this is why i think it's unrealistic to suggest that um the culture you're born into isn't some kind of heritage uh, because it is it, it, there's actual damage to your body if you aren't inculcated into the patterns of behavior that your parents show with you and that they are expressed in a particular way because of the culture that your parents had. And so I don't think you can say that that's not the case. I mean, I'm not saying these things can't be learned or anything like that, but that you, you are definitely born with, uh, you, you inherit this kind of thing. And I think that's a fair way of putting it is inherit from your parents through their, their behavior with you and the values they teach you. Here before me is the, is the skull of an Englishman taken out of the bones. No, I'm sorry. Sorry? Uh, Sorry, I didn't hear. You. Oh, okay. All right. It was for it was for my benefit. It was for my benefit then. That's okay. Wow. Uh, all right. We we probably have time for like two more, right? Gotcha. I think yeah. I think just to be as quick as possible. Joel Sass. We we did get that one. Aurora says, "Was the U.S. civil rights movement an agenda too?" Yeah, I think agendas can be a really. I think agenda, was, agendas an agenda it can be a good or a bad agenda. Yeah, totally. MLK. Definitely had an agenda for America, you know. Yeah. 
Gotcha. It's, it's okay to have an agenda. I mean, literally everyone has one. And if you don't have an agenda, then you're some sort of fucking loser who does nothing. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that completely. Yeah, if you everyone, there's there's no like neutral yeah. participant. We're all in this for something. Gotcha. We do have. Well, no, no, there are people who don't get involved in you know, like you know, whatever. But you, you, no one is just a blob that sits there and does nothing all day in any way, shape, or form. Someone's got some agenda about something. No. Gotcha. Sophie M says, "Here's my source, Sargon. Can you beat a sample of twenty thousand, twenty-two thousand patients? So I can, I can oh, give shit. you that link." Sargon. Yeah, yeah. Send it across. I mean, I, hey, I, it's worth looking into. I might be wrong. Thanks so much. Of stealth creations, I'm kind of doing these at random and try to move as fast as possible. They said, "If we produce Anne Rand times Bernie's, I think." Times Bernie Sanders fiction. I think they mean like a cross between Ayn Rand and Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Would free market advertising spread it the farthest? Should, should be redistributed. Okay, I'm gonna. I love you. I'm gonna need that one more time. No, yeah, I'm. I yeah. I'm also. Yeah. They said uh, for Vosh slash Sargon. If we produce Ayn Rand Bernie Sanders fiction, would free market advertising? spread it the farthest should be redistributed i'm going to take a guess and 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 say that the question is whether a synthesis of these ideologies would be would be would be good at marketing itself or do they literally mean fanfic i'm going to take a shot in the I dark i think it's a meme it's a meme i think it's a meme i i, I can't I you can't know meme. you can't know that carl yeah. i'm taking a shot in the dark i'm going to say Go yes on, comma 24 comma by the end of 2023 hopefully that answers something um and uh yeah there we go uh, <laughs> okay thanks so much maybe Pisatis, i got it you know Pisatis john thanks for your uh comment they said sargon that family court take was actually based i've always had that take hmm? yeah. it, it just seemed to have been the case you know um uh, yeah I've, I've said that many times gotcha well, yeah. thank you yeah, i appreciate that I think I think that a lot of um, I think that a lot of the problem with male suicidality, which is very disproportionately represented, stems from sort of the 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 breaking down or the dissolution of old patriarchal values. We're kind of at a at like a juxtaposition, you know, um, where where like the old system didn't really work that well and it was kind of bad, but it was at least stable, kind of, and yeah. and now we're moving into something new. But the transitionary period is fucking awful for a lot of people. Um, I, so. I, I think the problem is the old system actually did work very well, um, and that's why it perpetuated for such a long time. But that's not be that's not to say that it was inherently just. Uh, and I think there were injustices in it that were naturally teased out when we uh, when we decided that we would try and organise the civilization that we have more along the lines of fairness and reason. And this is a consequence of that. And it's different from that, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't. I think I don't it disagree does with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think that's fair. Yeah, it it worked in the sense that it was stable and functioning and self replicatory yeah, yeah. and productive, and it it, it yeah. achieved its goal of producing more generations and increasing the population. Yeah, yeah, that was the goal of it. Gotcha. Thanks so much. And we have one last one, and this is just a clarification because Benjamin Holm, thanks for your original question, which is they they just wanted to clarify. So their original question was, and in, in Sargon, you responded to this where they said, if your issue regarding immigration is purely cultural, why did you bring up? the point that a percent of people don't identify as white British, then you had given a response and they, they tried to clarify. They said, to clarify, I meant that you stressed the point that a percent of people don't identify as white British. I'm half Arab and I was born in England and I don't identify with being white British. Am I not English? Sorry, can you say that again? <laughs> No problem. It's all right. It's a mouthful. I apologize. They said... Yeah, exactly. It's, it's difficult to follow it because of... Yeah. You bet. They said, to clarify, I meant that you stressed the point that a percent of people don't identify as white British. I'm half Arab and I was born in England and I don't identify with being white British. So am I not English? It's up to you to tell me whether you're English. Do you agree that the values of England... Are good. Do you although the English are good? Do you think that England is is a decent place? Do you like the customs? Do you like the traditions and the history and the heritage? Like there, there's nothing preventing you from buying into all of this. 
Um, like I, I'm, a, I'm a mixed race to some myself. Um, but if you, but it's up to you to decide that you are committing to the ideals and to the, the, the methods as well. And the methods are probably part of the ideas of this. It's up to you to decide that. I, I can't decide that. Gotcha. I want to. I want to know that I am an American, but I fucking hate America. I, so that's my. That's my synthesis. Why do you hate America? Um, America does horrible, horrible stuff to its own people and abroad. I hate the the superstructure. American people. Uh, well, I guess I hate them too, but I love them too. You know, um, I, it's it's that it's that the complicated duality of wanting the world to be better for people who disagree with you. You know. What What are you comparing it to, though? When you oh. say it does horrible. Th- um, oh, I mean, I, I, if you want, we could like look at how many regime changes are average for a country. I think America would probably lead in that, along with like foreign wars and deaths and war and stuff like that. But I, just in a general I mean, I'm an anarchist. I don't like yeah. states in general. I'm sure if I lived in Italy, I would feel the exact same way about that country um, or, 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 or right, okay. Kazakhstan or whatever. Korea. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Thanks so much, folks. It's been a true pleasure. We do need to wrap up and we say thank you so much for being with us. Thanks so much to the speakers for being here, spending their time. There are a lot of places they could be. So we do appreciate them hanging out with us and their links are in the description as mentioned, folks. So if you heard them for the first time, somehow they are linked in the description so you can hear more at those links below. So once again, thanks so much, guys, for being here with us. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Um, anytime you lied, I don't have anything better to be doing. Uh, it took me an hour to eat a loaf of bread before the stream started. That was sort of my accomplishment of the day. Um, and it's and, and it still might be after this. Um, thank you so much for the time, James. As always, you do wonderful work. Sargon, thank you for coming on. I appreciate the discussion. Yeah, I had a really fun time. Um, it felt a lot more productive than the previous one, which was nice. Um, <laughs> That's yeah. true. I, I, <laughs> Dude, you made the previous one insufferable. All right. Um, I apologize for the, uh, the 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 absenteeism at the beginning as well. It was family stuff. There was nothing I could do about it, you know. Totally oh yeah, yeah, right. of course, of course. But of course. Uh, yeah, no, it was a very very good time. Yeah, yeah, I apologize for that. Uh, very good no, time no. and very interesting. Uh, send me across that study as well if you can, please. I'm interested in having a look at that. Thank you Absolutely. Very much. Thank you, guys. So with that, take care, folks. We hope you have a great rest of your Saturday. It's fun as always. And we'll see you next time. We're off air. Thanks so much, guys. It's been a pleasure. You're off air. I am. No N-words. Not yet. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, 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 Carl James, really appreciated it. Well, you wouldn't be the first one. I've done it like five times now. Um, I, I, I will say just really quickly in, in other business, um, James, really, really looking forward to whatever gets organized with Destiny come late or after March. Uh, it's going to be brilliant. And um, I promise I'll try to respond to your emails faster. Sorry. You bet. No worries. That's all right. Well, I'm looking I'm forward to abortion for Destiny. Oh, yeah. It would be a that's, lot of that's fun. That's exciting stuff. But uh, I am going to go, though. But uh, thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, My I pleasure. Had a very good time. Yeah. Thank Have you a good so one, guys. Very, very fun. Yeah. Thanks so much. Sleep well. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm actually not going to bed now. Now I've got was, a video. I was going to say, so. I forgot. You might have a while yet of re- sitting yeah, up reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... No, no rest for the wicked. But uh, anyway, take it easy. Have a good night. Take it easy. I'm just going to do calisthenics in front of my computer. Have a good one. That's what I'm talking about. That's why okay, I really... Go leave. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully I didn't leave too early there. Oh, man.